Alright, what is up my friends, how's it going and uh, welcome to the celebration of our 500 subscribers of this channel and uh, as far as the celebration is concerned, just gonna check. Sorry about that. I was just getting a lot of, <laughs> I was hearing my own uh, voice in the live stream. However, yes, back to the live stream. Uh, we do have 500 subscribers finally, and uh, that is good. And thank you all for the love and support. And of course, uh, we are playing with the 1.32 public beta patch, and we are going to play as the Mitridatic Wars. And of course, we have uh, three different playable factions. We have the Roman factions under Sulla, who led the Optimates, as well as the Mariani by Marius the Younger, who is in charge of the Popularis. However, Pontus has won the vote, and so we are going to play with uh, Mithridates the Great or Mithridates the Sixth. Let's just go ahead, have a quick look at the faction over here. Hello, Andrew Fish. Welcome to the live stream and uh, glad to have you with us. However, yes, with Pontus, we have two faction uh, traits. We have independence, which gives 10% melee defense during battles in own allied territory. Not that great of a, you know, uh, of a buff, I would say so, as I typically tend to play a bit more aggressive. And of course, we have the Echoes of War, which gives a minus 25 diplomacy with Roman factions, which means peace is not an option with the Roman factions. However, we will be looking forward to uh, annihilating the Roman factions. However, as I said in this live stream, I will let all the viewers decide for themselves uh, how we are going to proceed with the direction of this live stream series. Finally, we also have under Pontus itself three uh, three traits, two of which are buffs, which is the spider's web, which gives increased spy, spy success chance and cap. We also have quote intrigue, which gives uh, decreased party loyalty, and we have the uh, multiculturalism, which gives decreased foreign culture public order penalties. Uh, nothing really too great, however, this decreased party loyalty is quite significant. And we are going to set it onto normal mode, and that is because um, this is a prolonged campaign, so I could even set it to legendary or anything. And regardless, it's always going to be on normal difficulty unless, um, you know, we find a way around this. However, being said, let's hop right into the campaign. So, of course, as you know, I have been, uh, you know, modding uh, this uh, campaign as well. And uh, some of the main things I've done is the UI changes. As you can see, this loading screen is has been done by yours truly. And uh, yeah, Andrew Fish, hard, it doesn't matter. I can put it on any difficulty and it'll still be on normal, you know. Unfortunately, uh, that's the way it is with the Mitridatic War campaign and as well as with the Alexander campaign. There is no way to change the difficulty as of yet. Of course, the Divirea Tempera team is trying hard to find a way around this because the only way to create a new campaigns is to actually create them as a prologue campaign and a prologue is always on a normal difficulty. So there's no way to change that. However, let us continue. You are Mithridates, having gone against the great enemy of Rome already and been successful, which we weren't, we actually kind of lost. A recent setback should only serve to increase your hatred of these oppressors from Italy. Bide your time and let them consume each other in political strife and the time will soon be right to rid the world of Rome once and for all. Excellent. So we do have an objective issue. Let's uh, actually try to play with our objectives in mind. Um, push back the Roman incursions, post all the way back to Italy. Be at war with the following faction, Solani. So that is the first of our uh, objectives. However, before we go ahead and do that, I am quickly going to create a poll. And the poll is going to be um, mercenary, let's say the mercenary um, limit. And, uh, you know, I, I do definitely need a moderator for this, um, you know, to handle the live stream. And uh, since my channel has grown, I am going to uh, change that. So minimum, uh, let's say 
zero to four uh, army unlimited high let's put it on high let's say four to ten army all right so that's the first vote that's been going on let's uh, see if uh, what happens with the vote so we are going to of course uh, have a quick look at our provinces while you guys vote uh, you know some of the things i want to stick to in this campaign uh, again is to use as you can see we uh, have updated the unit cards as well and it will be incorporated into the base mod of divide tempera and uh, you know we, i do want to stick with a lot of the uh, pontic armies but i can play a little bit more flexible based on your votes of course and uh, it seems like so far we have a high vote for the uh, mercenaries so most likely we will be getting a lot of uh, good mercenaries as well as AOR units, a good blend of an army. However, that being said and done, let's quickly jump into our politics. Go ahead, hide the advisor. Pacifist thirst for power. That is absolutely horrible. I am going to make a polit uh, politics guide in the near future, hopefully. And uh, yes, of course, we are going to have a civil war by the looks of it. And uh, as you can see, uh, minus 10 from the thirst for power. And of course, pacifist is going to increase that even significantly. So it's going to be a little bit tough. And of course, our other factors such as our faction, which gives a minus 10 loyalty. Um, right. We could secure loyalty. However, we are protected for 20 turns. So we don't need to for now. And of course, uh, I am going to go into an in-depth political guide. And for now, we are Mithridates and we are married however one of our daughters is married off to our ally tigranes the great of armenia we also have a couple of uh, sons mitridates makares a daughter over here pharnikes and of course a i believe another daughter who's just of age seven uh, one of the things with politics, and I will explain that further in depth, however, we will proceed with the live stream, is that you do want your zeal, your authority, as well as your cunning to be as high as possible so that your female characters can conduct whatever it is in the blue and green lines of the uh, politics. Uh, and in order to improve their stats, you're pretty much going to have to do all of the yellow abilities as well as this ability over here, leisure time, which increases your cunning. However, that being said and done, as far as politics is concerned, things are looking good. Let's look at our diplomacy. Can we establish trade agreements? And we are going to do that. And uh, let's see if we can get some payments from them. They're willing to pay us because we have quite a few resources. And uh, let's go ahead. They're going to reject that. Okay. Let's see if we can get a non-aggression. That would be helpful. Because we don't really want to go to war with them. We have to be at war with the Romans. Let's also try to peace out the Syracuse. Or actually get them on a friendlier. Perfect. Okay. The Cartley. And go for a trade agreement and an aggression. So it looks like our eastern, um, eastern frontier is quite secured. Penry, hello, glad to have you with us and welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, if you haven't already uh, voted for the direction of this campaign, this is the mercenary uh, vote. So I suggest you go ahead and, uh, you know, um, w vote away. So let's go ahead and end this poll and we will create yet another poll, start a poll actually. And should we help our ally? Armenia against the Seleucids and gain access to Syrian AOR elephants. Okay, it's just a simple yes or no. We are going to create that poll as well. Okay, back to our diplomacy, Bithynia. Well, Bithynia is really the faction is under the Romans. We can trade with the Cecilia as well. So let's just go ahead, trade with them. Make sure we get a non-aggression as well. Perfect. And Bithynia will most likely be, um, will most likely be the faction that declares war against us. So we're gonna have to be a little bit careful about Bithynia. 
over that being said and done leisurely reclining surrounded with psychopaths does something uh does sometimes lead to plotting murders hence leisure time should be should increase cunning hello hello gupta welcome welcome to the chat elephants will make it too easy okay fair enough i do agree however we are going to leave it up to the to the voting and before we go ahead and end the turn we're going to have to do some recruitment it seems for the most part things are looking quite good we are going to name this uh with my hellenic style Legio 1 Pontus, I like doing that. And of course, um, we do want to get some, as we suggested, we do want to get some uh, AOR as well as mercenaries. We have opted for high, so we're going to see very diverse armies, and that's something I don't typically pay, play as. However, we are going to spec this up to be a food kind of a province. We can dismantle this building. We don't need a barracks over there. Meanwhile, over here, we do have a oh, nomadic. Uh, that is pretty... That is pretty sucky. Okay. Uh, go ahead and build. Alright. Meanwhile, temporarily... Okay, I'm kind of liking the looks of uh, Bithynia at Pontus. Uh, we are going to retain this as a military province. We are going to retain this as a military province. Eventually, the goal would be to conquer Asia. Asia is an S-tier economic province, so we are going to go ahead and conquer that. Meanwhile, I believe the Seleucids are winning. Uh, the war against the Seleucids are winning in the chat, so we are going to go ahead and declare war against them. But in order to do so, let's get some spies. Of course, the wealth from industry and all that is rubbish, so we are going to get the line of sight. And meanwhile, we can also perhaps uh, deploy a couple of dignitaries if we can. They're quite expensive, 3,000. I don't like that. And uh, let's see, what can we actually hire? I think the important thing would be to kind of hire some low-tier units. And we are going to go ahead and do that. We don't need these archers. They're a little bit too expensive for my taste. And of course, I don't need these swordsmen. We're going to disband them, get a bit of that extra population in here with the Katoikoi. And uh, some uh, unit that has been revamped is actually this Pontic Late Infantry. It's a pretty um, decent um, infantry unit. As you can see, it has 35 armor. And most importantly, it comes from the third class population. So we are going to go ahead and recruit a couple of them. Uh, meanwhile, see if we can recruit some Alangite as well. We'll need about four of them. Of course, I could recruit some, uh, you know, some uh, mercenaries. However, I don't have access to any uh, good mercenaries for now. So, can we recruit a bit more troops? No, we cannot. Can also expand this. However, I am going to conserve a little bit of money. Meanwhile, we also have technology, and we have kind of researched quite a bit into technology. The growth rate is looking good, and uh, what we need to do is we can go for that. I believe we should go for state banking, which gives increased empire maintenance, uh, or decreased empire maintenance, as well as tax rate. Let's have a look at the chats. Didn't beat the Romans either. Yes, yes, Ro uh, Mithridates didn't beat the Romans. He used Sarmatian mercs a lot and Persian troops. He did in a few battles. Daniel Lara, hello. Hello, Daniel. Welcome to the chat. Glad to have you with us. And uh, another important thing is we do need a dignitary as well as a commercial. Commercial is not that powerful. Replenishment growth. You know what, I actually like the growth as well as, um, not the replenishment, the public order. That's quite good. Let's go ahead and get that and see if we can actually get a champion. And this champion's quite good. Minus four upkeep for all land units. However, I do like to mix the upkeep as well as, if possible, the experience gain. And uh, of wounding successful assassination. I feel this guy is pretty good. Um... I'm kind of torn between the two. Although the replenishment rate is also quite significant. So I am going to go ahead with this guy. And by the looks of it, we are all out of money. Let's see if we can get some trade agreements going on with Roma's clients. Or Salani's clients. Keep in mind, 
that Roma is kind of at a civil war currently. So that is quite good for us because they will be distracted while we kind of try to help our ally, the Hake, in their war against the Seleucids. And I'm not going to declare it just yet. I am going to wait for the next turn. Let's go ahead and end this turn. We do have an edict that we can issue. And I think we have a couple of edicts that we can issue, but we don't have full provinces. We just have the one over here in Panticapeon. Quick look at the slaves. Slaves is all right. So I think early game, what is kind of important is the tax harvesting as well as the growth rate and public order is quite good. Our food is looking quite good. So I'm going to go for that growth rate as that can really spiral into the late game. However, so we can also have a quick look at what our political rivals control and they control pretty much the northern half or pretty much the uh, Bosphorian half of our kingdom. And uh, yeah, with that being said and done, let's go ahead and end the turn and I will have a quick look at our chat. Hello, Sergeant Meem Suraj. Welcome to the chat. Shipur, I wonder if Rome would have adopted the famed Spartan training Agoge to create specialized legion full of uh, Legio 1 Achaea. Uh, I doubt it, man. Sparta, man, as much as I love Sparta, um, Sparta is pretty much a done and dusted force. And, uh, you know, we are, you know, it's not, it's not great. Uh, at this time, it's way past its prime. And uh, pretty much Sparta is just a meme in Divide Tempera. I think the dominant power in, oh, wow, end turn is over. <laughs> Lol, that is quick. And that's one of the advantages, of course, of these, uh, you know, minor campaigns. You have fewer factions and, of course, you have uh, better end times. Okay, so can't really recruit, um, you know, better cavalry, unfortunately. And that is because, of course, we can't get to the third level of barracks. And uh, go ahead and build a um, annotation building over there. We don't need this um, building I just remembered so we can uh, trade it out for a um, temple instead meanwhile I can also recruit one more guy over here and I am going to try oh minus 15 upkeep for all land units that is pretty good minus 9 morale that is also amazing what about Mithridates yes of course he is a governor for sure Right, okay, we're going to put our faction heir, Makaris, raise army, put him up over here in Phanagoria. Go ahead, rename him Legio 2 Osporus. I do have a very Romanesque style of naming my Greek armies as well. And, uh, all right, I think what will be helpful against the, uh, the Lucids will, of course... B. Let's move our spy down firstly. We'll be, of course, um, you know, getting some javelin units because they are extremely powerful against phalanx type units. Let's go ahead and select two units to protect the flanks of our of our hoplites and can go for the Turios um Ponticoi Turioforai. As well as these guys. These guys are quite good. However, these guys have better defense. So put them over there on the flanks. Meanwhile, get a couple of these guys as well. And finally, we need to get some cavalry. And right now, I want to get cavalry. That's pretty cheap to maintain. And uh, these guys are a little bit expensive. Hmm thing is our economy won't be up and running until quite a while let's go ahead put this guy over here meanwhile we can move our dignitary over there just deploy him so that he levels up and uh, basically legio 2 bosphorus is going to start recruiting some of those more unique units and what we are looking for is of course these amazing archers over here they're quite good 18 missile damage which is quite high for an archer i believe cretian archers have the same amount of damage however with the cretian archers of course they have more armor piercing 
And of course, the range is 185, which is quite respectable. Um, right, that being said and done, I think we are almost done for this turn. We can recruit just one more unit. We're going to have a quick look at the Pontic Medium Cavalry. 28 armor, that's quite good. 8 ammunition, 7 speed, 28. But looking at significantly more damage, 33. And over here we have 32 weapon damage. However, 12 of which is armor pen, which is quite good. Melee attack of 11, melee defense of 10. Here we have 10 and 10. So I do believe these uh, medium cav definitely better. And uh, yes, the price also kind of explains why. And uh, I think for the price, we are going to have to go with the Pontic Skirmisher Cavalry. Or, you know what? Taking out... Taking out um, Antiochia is going to be quite difficult. So what we are going to do instead is we're going to get more late infantry. And uh, for late infantry, we can also get the Galatian warriors, who I do like. So we will get a couple of those Galatian warriors. They're quite heavy and they're quite good against, um, you know, walled settlements, which is what we are going to do. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at politics. Everything seems to be fine. Still quite loyal. Can go ahead, end the turn. Quick look at our chat once again. And Roman, no Roman legions of Sparta existed. Yes, that is true. And Sergeant Meme Soraj basically answered my question. Awesome. Finn bro, does this exist anymore or happen to me? There was a bug where all Seleucid satrapies would rebel. And next turn got peace agreement, but the armies were still hostile to one another. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't seen that myself. And we are in the next turn. There isn't much time to actually read the chat in this campaign. And uh, let's see what we can recruit over here. We have a couple of... We do want to spread out our recruitment. Move into Samosata. And we have 13. They have 17. So it's not going to be an easy, easy battle. However... What we can do is now recruit one guy over here. Can't recruit any more cavalry units. I think I'm quite happy with that army composition, to be frank. And we can also upgrade our nomadic township. Meanwhile, over here, before that turns into a slum, let's build that temple. Over here, we can upgrade that, build another sanitation building. That's great. Okay. And I think just for one skirmisher, which won't make much of a difference. However, we do have to sit here for a couple of turns. We can't really get any archers. However, the Sparabara. Okay, we, uh, we can't really recruit. We don't have much money, so just going to wait and end this turn as well. Continue to read the chat. And yeah, with Awesome Finn, bro, don't really know, man. Don't really know about the bug, but I will report it to the team. Fenry, where are you from, Samari? I am from India, originally. I am a citizen of India. However, I live in the Middle East, in, a, in Dubai. Your campaign videos, such as the Roman one you're doing, are really good. I enjoy them. Can't wait to play this new campaign. Johnny Oak, you don't have to wait anymore. It is... Um, it is kind of live, and uh, you can download the public beta on Steam. All right, let's uh, actually declare war on the Seleucids. And uh, not really sure. Over here, we can kind of explore a little bit more. I'm a bit... Okay. I think uh, we can move slightly into Antioch here. It is summer. I hope it's not a harsh summer. Okay, that's good. Let's go ahead and kind of raid. Very un... Uh, very barbarian-like. Meanwhile, the Hake can ask to join the war against the Seleucids. And... Wonderful. We are at war with the Seleucids. And a uh, quick look at whether we can get some mercs. Nope. All right. Uh, meanwhile, over here, I am going to retain those buildings as it is. And over here, I don't really need this farm. We can go ahead and demolish that. And... Right. Okay. 
pretty happy with how things are looking. Doesn't seem like there is much else to be done. And, and with that, yes, I'm just going to go ahead and end the turn. We can pop right back into the chat. The cinematic recaps are good on the Rome campaign. Uh, Sami Kaze. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for that. I uh, do. Uh, I have put in a lot of work to learn how to, you know, to implement that into my campaigns. And it's getting a lot of positive feedback. So really, thank you guys uh, for appreciating uh, the hard work. Uh, Loreo Hep. Hi, all. Hi, Loreo. Welcome to the chat. And of course, our allies are asking us to join the war against Pathia. We are going to join. However, we are going to take some money for it. And in hindsight, I don't think I should have joined because that would have made actions a bit disloyal. And uh, we are protected still, so I don't have to worry about them for now. All right. And... Uh, Let's see, we have leveled up our character over here and get a couple of these. And all right, quick look. Maybe that army that was over here has gone into the settlement. And uh, maybe we'll have to attack the settlement. I don't exactly know. We do have about 9,000. And what does the garrison look like over here? It is pretty good. I could retreat. However, I'm going to play a bit more aggressively. Go ahead, attack over there. And of course, they far outnumber us. And hopefully, that will encourage them to attack us in the end turn. Meanwhile, we do have a bit of a uh, good amount of income. So, we can go ahead and start trying to improve the public order in some of our provinces. Turn off the taxation wherever we can. Meanwhile, over here, we can go ahead and build the workshop. Gives us, uh, not the workshop, um, the iron mine, so that we can get a shield maker or a weaponsmith, I believe. Yep, the weaponsmith, which is important. And, uh, yep, all right, oh, everything's looking good for this turn. Our dignitary has leveled up, and we are going to spec him for the preparation of Asia. Meanwhile, things could get a little bit sticky over here. We can move into Saracena, and I actually want to... It seems like I don't want to get involved in any war. Right. This is Saracena, so I do need to move my character all the way into Saracena. All right, we'll get that penalty. And uh, basically, uh, these guys is what I want. I want the Mr. Forai, Skitioi, Lonko Forai. They are not available to me right now. However, you guys might not know this. They don't have amazing stats. But, of course, they are a uh, hybrid lancer, horse archer kind of a unit. But most importantly, they have one of the highest um, mass or unit mass available to cavalry units in the game. And... Uh, it's kind of almost as good as a Nicene Cavalry. There are two types of Nicene Cavalry, if I remember correctly. There is the early Nicene Cavalry, uh, and there is the uh, super late Nicene Cavalry. So they are obviously the first two highest in terms of unit mass. And then you have these guys as third. They are even more powerful than the Merepo's horse breed. So quite good to get those guys. And if you guys weren't aware of it, um, I would recommend getting those guys. However, that being said and done, let's go ahead, end this turn once again, go back to the chat. New Unicards are pretty awesome. Thank you, Sergeant Meme Suraj. Yeah, I'm very happy with the Roman campaign. Awesome mod. 666 uh, subs. Google says it's an evil number. Can Total War even have an evil campaign? It's not Warhammer. Right. <laughs> Are these new units or just later reforms from the base campaigns? They are not new units. They are actually new unit cards. And okay, so we are going to fight this battle. Our very first battle against the Seleucids. They do have slight advantage in terms of numbers. And we are going to have to play this quite well. Otherwise, it could be our first loss of the campaign. And we don't want to begin with a loss. So let's go ahead, hop into the battle. I will continue to read the chat. 
Angry Bacteria, welcome bro. Been a while, how have you been? The unit in the upper right of the recruitment panel looks so cool. Uh, is it a thorax a swordsman? I'll have to find out. Upper right of the recruitment panel, okay. Can you get some Syrian archers? B company, 100%. We will be getting some Syrian archers. Let's go ahead. Sunlight looks like it will be good for the warm filter. Quickly deploy my units. We don't really have any <laughs> missile units, and that's going to be quite an issue. We do have just one cavalry unit. That's also going to be quite an issue. But on the bright side, we do have... We do have good quality troops. We're going to put our curious spearmen like that. And I'm going to show you guys a new formation that I discovered. Keep these guys a little bit narrow. And uh, we can deploy them like this. So it is kind of like an oblique order. And then get these guys kind of protect their right flank. Okay. And uh, yeah, okay, they can regroup four. I don't mind that. We get our Galatians over here so that they can flank. Meanwhile, get these guys over here. One cav unit over here, one cav unit over there. Perfect. Toggle the guard mode, turn off the fire at will. And as you can see, this is the formation. And of course, the uh, Thorakitai Chalka Speeder is the, the Thorax Bronze Shield Pikeman. And the reason I actually deploy in this style is you might think that I'm exposing the weaker flank and with the oblique order and I am going to make a army guide uh, series with my faction overview series and I'm going to begin with Sparta because I have almost already um, done the review. And what I've noticed is that with the oblique order, if you uh, kind of put forward your left flank, which is what was historically done at the Battle of Leuctra, the left flank is usually the less prestigious flank that faces off against the more prestigious right flank. And in the case of the Battle of Leuctra, it was the Spartans who faced off against Thebes. And Thebes basically made their left flank super powerful. And what we do with that is that we actually have more plentiful yet weaker units. And uh, if they have a formation, that's even better because they can hold out for longer. So the enemy will be enticed to attack this left flank, as you will see. And uh, the reason I use the left flank forward is that once these spikes come down, they actually protect the unshielded side because no enemy can kind of hit this unit in the flank because the pikes will prevent that from happening. Meanwhile, of course, the right flank uh, does have some units to protect our phalangites on their right flank. However, without further ado, let's go ahead and start the battle. We're going to have to move our army up, of, up front, but it seems like... They are attacking us. I kind of forgot that. But let's actually try to try to rush them. And one of the things you want to understand is you don't want to go to the midway mark when you're marching your army. And previously I used to do that. It's just a small point. What you want to consider is that the time it takes for the enemy to reach their position as well as your position. So you will hit the midway mark at the same time. So you want to hit somewhere around 33% of the distance between both armies. So that's what I've done over here. And now the new 33% would be somewhere over here. So this is the safest way to move your armies up ahead. And as you can see, of course, our, our, uh, you know, our decline flank is going to be slightly behind. Our general on the right flank over here, Mithridates himself. See if we can see him. He's over there. Quick look just to make sure. All right. Okay, that's, and this, these guys are pretty good, you know, so they will take a lot of the missile damage, which is quite good. And uh, our pikemen are nearly in formation. Let's go ahead and just toggle on that phalanx mode. We can have a quick look at Mithridates himself. I have, I have designed him myself. Of course, the generals in this uh, mod have been, or in this campaign, have been designed by yours truly. Meanwhile, uh, let's go ahead all our javelins over there precursor jabs cavalry on the right flank can go and hit this unit meanwhile we want to move up both of these units slightly forward we don't want them and of course that general has caught out my cavalry which is not good news 
We need some support over there. So let's actually get these guys over there. You guys can come here. Since hey. Move these cavalry behind. Wonderful. Get the skirmisher as well around. Okay, we're gonna need to move our pike line up ahead. Okay, chase this cavalry. Get a group number four to stop their general. Come on, Mithridates, chase that calf. Get it out of the battle. Meanwhile, this guy can charge here. All right, get our skirmishers. Galatians come around. Okay, wonderful. All right, this is going to be quite a tough battle. Just look at the huge disadvantage we have in terms of uh, the number of troops. It's crazy. However, can go ahead and charge into the flanks of these units. We have dealt with that cavalry, so that's good news. Meanwhile, the trouble is going to be, of course, with these archers hitting into our phalangite units. And, uh, of course, these phalanx units are also problematic. Get these Galatians to hit that unit. Move the cavalry, Mithridates himself, keep moving. And uh, these units need to come here. They can hit these phalanx unit in the back. Get them over there. Okay, cavalry, keep moving. Go for it. Pack them over there. Okay, Mithridates needs to stay a little bit behind. I really want um, their melee units to engage so that I can wipe out their, their archers. And now we can use these to throw spears into the backs of these phalangite units. Uh, or throw javelins rather. That's good. Let's get these guys over here. Quite an interesting first battle I must say so. And uh, definitely not as easy as I expected it to be. Well, it was always going to be a little bit hard, considering the fact that, um, that of course, just a quick look of the unit cards. As you can see with the unit cards, things are looking all right. And this unit is now getting shredded, thanks to our skirmishers. All right, and Mithridates kind of has the advantage over here. Wonderful. Okay, our Galatian mercenaries or Galatian swordsmen have completed dealing with the enemy over there. Meanwhile, Mithridates can go ahead, attack that archer unit. We're going to charge actually this archer unit as well. Completely get all of the archers out. And these are light hoplites. Okay, these guys are done quite good. All right, wonderful. Come on, wipe out those archers. These guys can come in here. Our Ponticoi Turiofora are doing quite good, actually. And uh, we are also done with these units, so get them out over here. Meanwhile, these units can form up over here. Go ahead, keep charging. General can... Wipe out some more of the archers. Go ahead, charge into the backs. You can charge for the general. The other unit, trying to click on it. Okay, go ahead, click there. Wonderful. Cav can charge into the backs of these units. Okay, this unit is done. Charge over there. Get the, the Galatian swordsmen back and around. Nope. Yeah, okay, it's fine. Just throw your javelins at these Phalangite. Meanwhile, Mithridates himself. 
Hmm. Quite a big battle, honestly. But we are doing quite well. We should be able to, to win this. And what I am going to do is actually going to use my Peltas uh, to just engage that unit. After which... After which I can just charge this unit in the back. Meanwhile, this unit can hit that general. Wonderful. Okay, our general Mithridates is finally in position. Get these guys around. Cavalry. Okay, wonderful. You guys can come back. And I wonder if these guys have turned around. They haven't. Okay. Go for it. You can attack here. General can hit that archer unit. Meanwhile, over here, we are nearly done with their general. So that's good. Okay. And this archer unit will be completely wiped out. get this cavalry over here all right meanwhile these phalangites have no idea what they're doing but kind of still holding on to the battle go ahead charge into this unit move back General, go ahead, charge there. Ooh, these phalangites have kind of turned around into my Galatians. Okay. What are we looking at over here? Another Chalka Spades unit trying to make its way back. These units are kind of caught in between. And we can charge our cavalry once again. Let's just quickly reform our front line. Move back our Turios spearmen as well. And this unit will route. Perfect. Okay, just create some breathing room over here. Wonderful. See if we can charge into the backs of these units. All right. Wonderful. Pull back. That wasn't a really good charge. We can get a couple of these units over here to encircle over there. Back over here. Wonderful. All right. And these guys can go ahead, hit those units over there. And all right. Just want to ch charge into some of these phalanx units. Can charge these guys back in here. These guys can charge into the back of that phalangite unit. Move our Galatians behind. And one of the good things about these Galatian swordsmen is that they actually have javelins, which is going to be quite helpful in making sure that this unit routes. However, this unit will not route, so we can actually just go ahead and throw our javelins into the back of that unit. And they will take some significant damage. And it seems with that, we have won the battle quite easy. Quite significant, but we are going to continue the battle. Make sure we wipe out as many of the troops as we can. And uh, fast forward over here. We definitely want to kill as many units as I can. So that in the next turn should be quite an easy auto resolve. Okay, these guys are done. I think those guys over there, I'm not going to be able to catch up to them. And 
it's just finally those guys over there and what you can do is actually click on this highlight all and it actually highlights everything as you can see the red marks as well as the move our skirmishers out of the way otherwise they will interfere with the cavalry chasing down okay quick look at the chat new units so okay i've already seen that syrian archers any news if DIA will incorporate Empire Divided? We are trying to do that. Uh, Empire Divided as well as, of course, the Imperator Augustus. I mean, myself and Sergeant Meme Swaraj have been doing it. I've seen Summary use chariots to devastating effect in field battles. Yes, chariots are actually quite good. However, in the public beta, they are a little bit nerfed. And actually, they're not nerfed. It's actually the fact that... Um, spearmen have been significantly approved and i will uh improved and i will actually explain that before i hop back into the campaign and as you can see melee attack and uh, melee defense is pretty much the same however we don't have the expert charge defense for spear units anymore but what we do have and i kind of have to end the battle now but what we do have is actually more bonus versus uh cavalry as well as uh, elephant units as well as chariot units and you also have increased unit mass which means your spearmen will do quite good. However, that was a pretty good battle. We didn't take a, a lot of losses. Uh, most of the losses are, of course, to lower levy kind of a unit. And uh, as far as damage is concerned, of course, Mithridates himself uh, racking up the maximum kills. No game sound. Surprised. Is there still a no game sound? Hmm. One second. Um, all right. I'm just going to go ahead and enslave the captives. Okay. I'm, I'm surprised there's no game sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, turn off a filter because I am using a filter to kind of prevent and turn off this limiter. Okay. And just decrease the dB. Can you guys hear the game sound now? Is it is it better? Hello, hi. No, those poor Seleucids. Which faction? No sound yet. Okay, this is quite interesting. I have no idea as to why. It shows me that there is game sound. And uh, it's pretty weird. Still no sound. Okay. Let's try to fix it up over here. And if I can't, I'm just going to continue with the campaign and I will fix it for the next episode, of course. And uh, go ahead, increase that. What about over here? Options. Uh, game settings. Oops, sorry, sound settings. It's all on maximum. So that is pretty strange. Is there still no game sound, guys? general our troops are running from the battlefield in shameful display lol yeah just a couple of them and uh, anyways here we are in the next turn let's go ahead and actually just take antiochia so there we go that's our first settlement hello what did i miss well you just missed a battle outside uh, Antiochia and we are taking Antiochia we can go ahead and actually loot the settlement because it is, of course, Persian culture. Not of course, but it is Persian culture. Go ahead, build a temple over here. And uh, upgrade some of these buildings. Meanwhile, we can demolish this one. Perfect. And we have also leveled up, so let's go ahead, take some of that. And, uh, and get... The movement speed, of course, these as well. All right. Okay, I'm pretty happy with this. We can go ahead and level up to over here. Get these guys. Have a quick look if we can recruit any of these. Can't. And we can upgrade our farms, which is quite important. Get some fishing ports over here. And I could also upgrade over here. However, I'm just going to wait for it. And uh, 
preserve some of the money that we have. Meanwhile, just check if we can get another dignitary, and that's this dignitary does give tax rate, which is also quite good. So we can go ahead and actually get him. Go ahead, get him. And with that, let's go ahead, end the turn, just level up the spy as well. Get a couple of abilities. We can move him further south. And we have discovered kind of Egypt. All right, so I think the next battle we can possibly take is Palmyra if we are able to, you know, kind of level up over there. However, I think we can get access to these mercenary elephants. Let's go ahead and end the turn and still no sound. Wow, that is actually quite interesting. I have no idea why that, that is the case. Uh, the game sound. Okay, advanced audio properties. Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. Okay, how about now? Can you guys hear it? Um, can you hear the game sound? Oh my god, such an idiot. <laughs> All right. Gonna have to. I think it was on the wrong source. Can you hear it now? Can you hear it? I'm just gonna alt tab back into the game. And is it too loud? Or is it just fine now? Yeah, it's fine. Nice. Thank you. Thank you guys for informing me. And yeah, it can be pretty boring to watch without the sound. So uh, I do apologize for that. I forgot to change the, uh, <laughs> the source. It has been a long time since I have. Um, you know, started a live stream and of course, you know, things are going to be like that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you guys. Once again. Oh, we do have some Syrian archers and someone did request for some Syrian archers. So we're going to go ahead, get a couple of those Syrian archers. Wonderful. And, uh, we do upgrade. We do get access to these Syrian archers. Also quite good. However, we can have to sit in here for a while. Or maybe we could push our offensive. We can't really reach over there. And I don't need to upgrade this building. Just a waste for now. Instead, what I can do is get another person. And I think Mithridates. Go ahead, get him over here. Put him as Legio 3 Asia. Okay. That's Legio 2. Legio 3 Asia. Wonderful. And we are going to go ahead and see if we can. Ah, okay, fine. I kind of did a mistake over here. However, we can recruit some Laoi. I think. Nope. Never mind, I'm just going to leave him in there for now. Quick look uh, if we can get this cavalry unit. We can't, so I'm just going to put this guy back into Fanagoria so that he can at least level up. Well, let's look at our politics. It's still at minus 18. Of course, I am at war with the Parthians. There is low peace for that. Can get trade with... Lycia, we're going to attempt to do that. And also get trade with the Ptolemoi. Except we can't. Let's try to get trade with the Tini. And we are actually going to see if we can get a defensive agreement with them. We can't. Okay. So let's actually just get some payment from them. Okay. Diplomacy is looking quite good. The Mariani. No trade. Of course, the Romans are going to hate us. Bithynia, are you going to trade with us? No. But Bithynia is most likely going to declare war with us uh, in this campaign. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful about that. Um, meanwhile, over here, let's go ahead and upgrade this so that we can get a little bit more income. And I think with that, we can go ahead and end the turn once again. Right. 
Are you using the usual submods you use in my other campaigns? Yes, uh, more or less I would say Antonio uh, Espinosa. Hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, the submods I use, I would say 80% of them I retain. It's just the 20% or 10% that I do situationally based on the campaign I'm playing. Of course, I am using the submod for um, Pontus uh, for the new unit cards. And speaking of the new unit cards, I believe that someone actually appreciated uh, one of the thorax units in the top right corner so i am actually going to have a quick look at which unit that is in the next turn and as you can see we are already in the next turn this is absolutely insane be like a spear and have a point haha <laughs> absolutely absolutely johnny oak and uh okay let's actually go ahead and see which unit that was Top right. Ah, yes. Ponticoi uh, Torakitai. That is the Pontic Torax Swordsman. Of course, it does come from the Katoikoi class. However, we are going to uh, recruit some Laoi. And we are going to recruit the cheapest possible Laoi that we can recruit. That's 474 for this guy. And of course, he does give a 300 Laoi, which is quite good. And uh, we can also get... And when I say Laoi, uh, of course, I mean uh, the... Third class population. And what else we need to recruit is, of course, um, some Katoi Koi. So Katoi Koi wise, 1400 for that guy. 1465. 1400. This guy is quite less, actually. 1500 for that. 1490. 1600. That's a bit more expensive. So, of course, I think it's between the Galatian warriors and, of course, these guys. Let's go ahead and get the Thorax guys. And with that, we should have 600 plus 400. And the reason I'm doing this is so that I can actually replenish over here. Okay, let's move our dignitary. is doing quite fine. See if we can move our eye a little bit further inland. And I might actually piece out the Seleucids, I think. I mean, Three once things. I take over the whole of Syria, I, I don't really see the point in attacking them further. And hopefully I can also piece out the Parthians. However, diplomacy-wise, just a quick look if we can trade with the Egyptians. It doesn't seem likely. I could join their wars, however, to improve our... Um, our... Um, political standing with them however that's not going to be very helpful so yes actually i am going to just attempt to turn on the limiter for the filter and hopefully that will not affect the sound as much you guys still hearing the sound is it fine because i don't want the sound to drown out my voice especially during a battle while well, this guy can of course go ahead and uh, himself over there let's go ahead end the turn have a quick look at the chat all right nothing much in the chat and i'm really impressed i mean i'm really happy that you know we have a lot of viewers in this live chat we have a 40 40 of you guys and honestly speaking i'm so so grateful to you guys for you know giving so much love to this channel i've really put in a lot of work into my channel and I always try to improve the content for you guys. And of course, I also try to contribute as much as I can to the Divide Tempera Glory, team. Wealth, Go ahead, get that non-aggression with these guys. Alright, in turn, we have replenished a little bit. Not too much. No idea where that army went. And, uh... Alright... Okay, we can move uh, this unit. I also want to see if we can recruit any other units that are useful. We do need about three more cavalry units, I would say. That would take our army total to 18. And then we have slot for two more units. And those two more units... Ooh, I would say... Perhaps chariots. Yeah, chariots are actually quite good. And I think chariots actually come from the Siege Workshop, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh... 
Let's use our money. Or save our money up for the next turn, rather. Meanwhile, we are almost done building up this final nomadic settlement after which we can have access to these beauty uh, Scythian heavy archers. They are quite powerful. And I just want to compare to see if our mercenary, uh, Syrian mercenary archers are quite good. However, they are not. The arrows are incredible. Yeah, actually, that, that's another thing I have done. I mean, it was a request of Cam and the arrows is something that I have done. Uh, Chaco, I'm just going to call you Chacho. All right. The recruiting in one province and disbanding in another for replenishment is a normal thing of the game. No. Yes, absolutely. You can definitely use that to your advantage. And uh, one of the things you can use is that, and it is kind of gamey, is that actually by disbanding a general, you do get 100 manpower for your um, first class population. However, recruiting a general doesn't cost any manpower. So, yeah, definitely that is a good thing. And uh, I am going to uh, put up another poll. And that poll is actually going to be chariots or elephants in Mithridates army. Chariots. Elephants. All right. So we have another poll for chariots or elephants in the Mithridatic armies. And you guys are going to decide that, of course. Uh, meanwhile, just want a quick look at our garrison. It's not looking that good, but we can go ahead and upgrade the settlement. And I don't think the Seleucids have a significant fleet. Just one single admiral. And uh, we should be able to deal with that. So what we are going to do is just move our spy around. But this guy can technically reach a little bit closer. We're going to have to be slightly careful about that. Can't really reach over there, unfortunately. And, uh... You know what? He can't actually reach from here. Can he get in range of the settlement? He can. So it is quite risky. What I'm going to have to do is wait a turn before I can move out. Perhaps get this army all the way over here and then wait for a turn. Uh, he definitely can't come through here because if I come down here, he has to kind of go this way. But he can go this way and then the fleet can attack and then it'll be uh, fleet versus both. So that would be quite devastating. Let's go ahead, just end the turn. Quick look at politics once again, minus 16. And yep, let's go ahead and end the turn. How you pronounce it was correct. Canarian way. Canarian, you're from the, uh, the Canaries? The Canaries Island, I'm guessing. <laughs> Is it an island? I'm so sorry. My, I, I'm pretty good at geography, as most of us are in this who watch historical titles and enjoy history. But I'm guessing it's the Canaries. The Canaries Island. Chariots go burr. Are the Greeks still a thing in this campaign? Well, actually, at this point of time, the Greeks are pretty much, uh, you know, just on the verge of their decline. I mean, the Greeks in mainland Greece are all done but dusted. They never get their independence ever again until, of course... Uh, the modern day state of Greece. Until then, the Greeks were pretty much under the Romans and then under the Ottomans. So, yeah, for mainland Greece, it's pretty much the last time they ha ever had their independence. However, in this campaign, we will attempt to grant the Greeks their independence again. And as you can see, it was a pretty good move to kind of wait over there. Meanwhile, a spy can move back. Okay, it seems like they are moved into Palmyra. Which means we can be a little bit more adventurous. Try to go for, of course. And no, we are saving up that money so that we can upgrade this shield maker. Meanwhile, we have also increased rank of several of our characters. So let's go ahead and do that. This guy, I no longer need him to be a, uh, what do I say, an economic dignitary. So I'm actually going to spec him for that 
cultural conversion as well as the empire maintenance meanwhile our champion has also leveled up so let's go ahead and select some of the abilities that i typically tend to take and uh yeah with that everything seems to be fine we can go ahead and end the turn it isn't a proper tw campaign until there is a little cheese lol absolutely angry bacteria summary what do you think about ancient empires i'm playing attila right now with fall of the eagles mod and i'm enjoying it pretty much i actually like fall of the eagles a lot it is so much fun especially with uh, europa perdita which is actually made by dresden himself i think the campaign difficulty it's better city maps are great um ancient empires is quite good i haven't played it extensively so i can't really comment on that i mean when it comes to this time frame i'm not going to be a uh, biased but i think oops didn't really see the public order over here but i think dividea tempera is without equal we are going to go ahead and prevent that rebellion from happening meanwhile over here we have finished our nomadic settlement so hooray for that which means we will have access to these archers these archers over here 263 denarii per turn that is insane <laughs> Oh my god. Wow, that is expensive. Meanwhile, we can just send this guy to kind of improve the public order in Caucasus. That will prevent the civil war from happening. And uh, this looks... Uh, this doesn't look so good over here with Cecilia. Oh, they are at war with the Seleucids. That is always welcome. And... Uh, Let's go ahead and attack this settlement. Easy battle. I can just auto-resolve it, but I am going to fight it. Because I don't want to lose troops. We are in a province that doesn't have Hellenic culture, so definitely have to fight that. Hello, Anubis. Welcome. Welcome to the chat. I mean, why not both? Elephants and chariots, Rolf. Okay, I can. I can do both. Let's have a look at the vote. Wow, it is a close one, to be honest. Um... We do have 54% uh, in favor of elephants, 46% in favor of chariots. For those of you who haven't voted yet, I recommend voting for who it will be, that uh, which units I will use in my main army. Let's go ahead and quickly deploy our armies. Now, we do have range units. And uh, hmm, get these guys over here. I'm gonna put Alright, quickly move everyone behind. Now these guys can act as a screen for our pikemen. Pikemen in behind. Archers can be a little bit on the left flank. We're gonna get our Galatian swordsmen on the left flank. Our late Pontic infantry on the right. General, of course, in the prestigious right. Get these guys over here javelins over there go ahead start the battle move up these units it seems like the enemy is going to sally forth to attack us so what we are going to do is we are going to quickly move our pikemen like that meanwhile our thorax spearmen can be like that which means our archers can come over here, deploy that guard mode. And the idea is when most of the enemy attacks over here, which I'm hoping they will, our archers can shoot into their unshielded side, which is quite an easy attack. Meanwhile, our Galatian swordsmen can be a reserve to these uh, thorax or uh, Turiophora units. And in order to make sure that the enemy actually targets our pike line, we're going to move our pike line a little bit closer and we're going to increase the angle of attack all right perfect go ahead deploy over here archers let's see what's going on on this side we can get these guys in and around as well okay a little bit confused of what the enemy is up to over here what graphic settings are you using? Is it all maxed? It's all maxed except water. I keep water on low, so if I go to the graphic settings, 
Everything is maxed. Everything is maxed. You know, I have a pretty good system. And uh, I keep water on low because actually uh, there is water under the ground. From what I remember. And actually keeping your water on extreme or anything about uh, consumes a lot of FPS. And don't ask me why, but CA decided that it would be a good idea to have water underground. And the game actually, uh, you know, uses up a lot to render that. So I would recommend keeping water on low. Meanwhile, the archers, I am going to stop the fire at will. Stop your attacks. Definitely want these guys to... It seems they're not taking the bait, so we are going to push up a little bit. Move these guys up there. Hope the sound is still fine, guys. You know, anytime the sound or anything is not working, please do let me know. And I will definitely fix that. Hey, summary. Recent sub over here. I blow <laughs> your ears. On YouTube, loving your Rome series. Really impressed by it. Love the 40 stack uniqueness and your skill in managing the economy. Thank you so much for those kind of words. It really means a lot to me. It is a really unique campaign for me as far as, uh, you know, um, Divide Tempara is concerned or anything is concerned. I haven't really played with uh, big stacks and the reason being is that I was always averse to it. But honestly, I would recommend using big stacks and I don't know why the AI is being extremely passive however we are going to just keep pushing up meanwhile our archers are going to have to come all the way around Galatian swordsman can charge over there Ooh, we're going to do something really crazy over here let's turn around get these guys make sure that we can't be attacked in the flank Okay, we can actually move our archers back over here. Get all of these guys to kind of form up over here. Alright, go ahead, attack. And I'm trying to just min-max over here. It's, it's a pretty easy garrison battle. And I don't know why I'm trying to min-max. But what I can do is just move my general all the way around. And you can hold down the shift key to issue commands in uh, chronological order now that this unit is kind of over there we can use our syrian archers to unleash hell upon the general unit and actually attacking them in the unshielded side as you can see will cause a lot of damage wonderful you can see we're absolutely shredding this unit with our uh, arrow fire yeah, and they should pretty much get done and dusted quite quickly. 138. Yep. It's all done and dusted for these guys. Meanwhile, we can also attack these guys over here. Get our cavalry around. It seems like these archers will be vulnerable. So let's actually get our general into that vulnerable side. We are getting attacked in the flank over here. So actually use our general to... Well, it seems like this unit is wavering, so pretty much soon enough we can use our late Pontic infantry to deal with that. And what a lot of players do mistake-wise is right over here. So I'm going to pause it over here, just show you a mistake. You see these two units? They can't really attack this unit efficiently. So what I would suggest is actually click both of the units. And you actually see that this unit is in a better position to kind of withdraw. So I would withdraw them like this and I'm going to play it. And as you can see, they are going to withdraw. And once they withdraw, you can just hold down that shift key, pull them up further ahead. And now they will be able to flank. Meanwhile, what will happen with the balance units is that they will force this unit to kind of turn about face. Or choose to be attacked in the sides, which is not ideal. Meanwhile, let's move our general across. Okay, get these guys over here. And of course, the pathfinding in cities makes it a little bit harder to do that. And unfortunately, it's a little bit harder. But as you could see, what I would be doing is I would actually get around them. 
However, this is still slightly better, of course, than attacking them straight, head on. Now that Mithridates is in the thick of it, let's go ahead and actually... We can actually do it over here, actually. We make these guys a bit narrow. Pull them up forward. Like that. Wonderful. Just turn them around like this. And this is the benefit of the narrow formation. Just look how nicely they move around the enemy unit without actually engaging them. And you think that when I attack these units, these guys will stay in their narrow formation? No, they won't. Because if I attack them, as you will see now, they will just turn and they become a wide formation. And like that, it's just a beautiful charge into the backs of the enemy unit. Quite good. Meanwhile, we can push these units over here, move these guys behind. And just like that, we have done. We can use our archers to hit that unit over there. These units are done. Wonderful. And now these two units can also charge over here. Perfect. Javelin units. And with that, we have won the battle. Should be quite easy win. Alright, let's have a quick look at the chat once again. Uh, could you explain about how you manage the economy so well and what you look for to make so much money? I definitely will. I will explain it in a economic uh, video. However, I will explain in uh, just in short as what I look for for when I look for a province. I look for specializing in a particular kind of economy. And for those of you who haven't seen, I do recommend looking at Toxburg's channel. Toxburg's channel is quite good. Uh, it actually explains the economic guide that I had made. So the economic guide that I use. So um, definitely have a look at it. It is a five part series and it is done really well. Anyways, down goes uh, Tapsicos, so that is good. And uh, we can once again loot the settlement. However, I'm not sure if that would be wise as we could get a rebellion in the province of Syria. So what we are going to do is we don't have enough money. We are going to just peacefully occupy the settlement. Okay, and of course, Mithridates has leveled up. So get that Eunice replenishment rate as well as we are going to improve our melee attack and defense skill. Meanwhile, over here, we can disband this building because I think the taxation is off over here. Quickly get the um, Shrine of Ares is quite good for the experience for the spear units. So let's go ahead and get that. Oh, actually, I forgot. We are saving up or we are trying to save up for, of course, the... Um, Let's see if we can Welcome. piece out the Seleucids. The it's on high. Old and there is much okay, we do. can piece them out. So if you have words, Since speak. I don't really need anything else. Wonderful. So we are at peace with the Seleucids. Let's see if we can get that trade agreement with the Ptolemids. They are not listened. interested. What about piecing out Parthia? Gotta watch out for Parthia a bit. Nope, it's on low. However, let's go ahead and end the turn. But before I do that, yes, I do remember uh, I blow your ears. Um, we definitely, um, I look for a particular kind of uh, economy. So with Asia, which I will be showing in this campaign, uh, Asia is pretty good as an industrial province. So you kind of stack up industry as well as in uh, any buildings that give you a benefit to your industrial, uh, you know, to your industrial output or gives you industry uh, related modifiers and of course you also want to build a slave trader the slave trader is the single most important building uh, ultimately what you want to look out for is if you look at the province uh, details you have three modifiers that adjust the overall of your uh, province and how much your province makes as you can see over here we have a total of and you can even mark mouse over here as you can see we have a total province wealth of uh, 1385 that's the sum of these three numbers over here and then after uh, these three modifiers that's what uh, you finally get so by maximizing your tax as well as your slave and minimizing your empire maintenance you can actually get this number to be four or five times the amount over here and that is a super powerful so that is the secret in a nutshell of the economy However, let's have a quick look at the poll and it seems like elephants win. So we are going to go ahead and end the poll. We are going to go for elephants as far as um, 
Mithridates is concerned. And, uh, all right. Um, over here, we could get a couple of these Scythian heavy archers. Definitely want to put them in the army with Mithridates himself. We do have enough money to get that shield maker. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, meanwhile, our spy can move towards, I think it is maybe time that we attack Tarsos. And a quick look over here. That is the Basileos. And we could have a very good battle if we uh, choose to declare war against uh, Tarsos. Let's just move up over there. Quickly hop into our politics. The blessing of the Cancel our agreements with them. And we are going to attack them missed, next. Meanwhile, in the um, and with that, we should have the entire province of Syria. So that's quite good. All right, back again to the chat. Um, 12, 12 AD, let's go. I actually also like 12, 12 AD Fenrir. It's amazing. Uh, 3090, geez. Yeah, that is actually my... Uh, uh, my spec and I actually got 3090 when it was brand new. I do intend to get the 4090. However, graphic cards don't really matter when it comes to Rome 2 um, that much. However, I will uh, invest in the 5090. So I'm actually skipping a generation on purpose. Um, because yeah, it does cost a lot. I'm not going to lie. Uh, how do the battle changes feel so far? Cal Calsa... Alcanel. <laughs> I absolutely butchered that name. I'm sure of it. Uh, I think uh, the battle changes. I like them personally because I absolutely hated and hated with a passion expert charge defense. So uh, for me, the battle uh, changes are a welcome change. So let's go ahead and uh, get these armies out of there. Start to put our army on that patrol stance meanwhile we can uh, disband this army i just want to have a quick uh, look at now these two guys i actually like them even though they come from the katoi koi class they're quite good so i am actually going to retain them meanwhile go ahead and disband these units as well as i don't need these uh turio four eyes spearmen anymore they're quite good However, I do have the units I need on my flank. Pontic Thorax Spearmen are definitely superior. Let's go ahead and disband a couple of those units as well. Meanwhile, we really need to focus on uh, getting our economy up and running. However, it is going to be a while before we can do that. Bithyniad Pontus starting to lose a bit. And we don't need food, really. Just save up a little bit. We can also convert this temporarily into a herding ground. And that does give a little bit more income. Okay, finally. Ooh, okay, I think I should just go ahead in the turn. Hop back into the chat. Looks like I'm quite late for the party, though. Congrats once more for the 500 uh, subs. Thank you so much, uh, Astube uh, Lunovat. However, it, uh, it's better late than never. Red boy, Ave Kaiser, glory for Rome. Hey, Red boy, glad to have you with us. And thank you for your recent comment on my video. I do remember the comment and it really meant a lot to me. So um, thank you. And thank you everyone who take the time to comment, like, of course, subscribe to uh, my channel it really means a lot to me it gives me uh i really am not trying to monetize my channel i want to stay i want my channel to stay ad free uh, and i really don't need the money i do this uh, uh, purely for the entertainment and as a hobby and of course for you guys so all the subscription and all even though it doesn't really matter to me as much as it would to any other content creator it does matter to me in the sense that it gives me an idea that I am doing a good job, that I am uh, being a good entertainer and I am pumping out good content to you guys. And that is the main purpose of, uh, of course, having that. Uh, all right. Having the subscriber count increase. So all of your love and support definitely uh, does help me in that regard. Let's go ahead and 
go down this route over here. We need that plus four loyalty for all political parties to offset our faction debuff as well as, of course, the debuff uh, of these party traits. Okay. Meanwhile, we have nearly done getting our armies all but ready. Come over here. Hey, we're going to keep marching a bit north and it's going to take a while for us to get access to those uh, Syrian mercenary elephants. And actually, that being said, we should actually research uh, this so that we can level up the building. So that will take us about 17 turns to get there. So quite a while off. Meanwhile, over here, we can get those archer units. They are better than the Syrian archers. However, just a quick look at whether we can get some of those beautiful mercenary cavalries I spoke about earlier. That's interesting. I think I am still in Phanagoria. So it will take me just another turn. And uh, you know what? I'm actually going to recruit these archers over here. And I think the Syrian mercenary archers, they're quite good. However, those guys are better, so... We are going to go ahead and disband those units. Alright, perfect. Let's go ahead and the turn. Back to the chat. 2 hour 18. I've had days of work over this game off. I've had days off work over this game. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're not alone in that, so definitely. Burn them, pillage, loot, chaos. Sorry, T Dizzle. Didn't read that. However, it's not a wise move to kind of get rebellions everywhere. And uh, sometimes it's a good move. Attila himself in the chat, T Dizzle. <laughs> All right, trade there agreement. They want a trade, trade agreement with us. I'm going to cancel that. And where are they exactly? If they are far away from our settlement, we can attack them. And I think they are far away from our settlement. Alright, here we are in the next turn. Meanwhile, I believe this is Tigranes. He does have a VMD, however, I'm not sure as to why. I'm actually going to uh, screenshot that. I'm not sure as to why uh, they don't use his VMD. And he has a pretty awesome uh, look that I have given him. However, in the campaign map, it doesn't show up. I go over here, as you can see. Just look at that. Beautiful stuff. Uh, everything is custom made with this guy. And, uh, yeah, by the looks of it, it seems like Tarsos is undefended. This guy can't really move up, so he might be able to take uh, Tyros. I don't care if he does. What we can do is try to backstab him. And move a little bit closer over here. Okay. Fantastic. And uh, that was not worth it. I thought we could... Yeah, we maybe we can patrol. We can't raid, but at least we can patrol, which will help with our um, upkeep cost. Meanwhile, move into Syracuse once again. Still don't have access to these guys. I wonder if these guys have access to them or have been recruiting them. However, two archers is good for now, so I can just put this guy in that... Um, and uh, get another champion to help him out with that army upkeep. And of course level up. Because 283 is a lot. Alright, let's go ahead once again end the turn. Back to the chat. I got a 2060 plan to skip until the 50 series. Yeah, actually Daniel Lara, that is quite a good idea. And in fact, if you're playing old games like Rome 2 Total War, what I would recommend is uh, be a little bit uh, smart about it and you can actually get second hand, which is quite which is in good um you know uh, condition if of course you're trying to be uh, fiscal about it. Uh, you can get a second hand 4090 and the price will drop significantly. There and is good as Oh, you're going to pay me for it. That's sweet. We're not going to accept that. However, um, 
what I do recommend is yes, you can get it for a lot cheaper. And when it comes to graphic cards, anything above the 70 mark, so as long as the last two digits are above 70, so you're looking at the whatever it is like 3070 or 3080 or 3090, uh, they are quite good. But as soon as you drop 70 and below, then you start to have problems. And I'm not entirely sure if we are going to be able to recruit those guys. Those guys are quite good. I really, really, really want those guys. Uh, but we're going to have to wait and see if we can recruit them. Well, these guys are not bad. Of course, the Pontic Thorax Swordsmen. But uh, they're not amazing. I wonder what happened to the army. Did they get wiped out? And I think it is, of course, the auto-resolve uh, issue over here. What we can do is uh, use the Seleucids who are on the verge of being wiped out. Trade words, agreement. And then give um, not trade so, agreement. Sorry. Greetings. Join the war now, against business. Felicia. It is on moderate. They will not accept. Uh, the Cilicias. Okay, we can go ahead and just attack them directly. They don't have any allies. We're going to call the Hake. What? Diplomacy. They've refused. So I guess we are no longer allies with the Hake. That kind of... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> didn't see that coming. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and just... I guess we could auto-resolve this. But it is pretty bad, so just fight it, I guess. Oh my god, that is horrible. I can't believe that the Armenians have decided not to join the war against them. But we can try to establish at least a defensive alliance with them. At least a non-aggression for now. And in the future, definitely the fog cool is much better. Start our deployment. Definitely not call them into any of our wars. Once again, we don't have any ranged units, but we do have some pretty interesting units over here. Let's go ahead, quickly deploy once again. This time, we don't really need to do that. Um, what's it called? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. How can I forget it? Um, oblique order. Yes, that's the word. We don't need to do the oblique order. However, we are going to go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead, start the battle. And move up our troops. What I am uh, also going to do is definitely share my presets with you guys. And my presets are basically a combination of uh, presets that I have taken from other, you know, other characters oh sorry other people in the community and as you can see i still have the habit of moving up my troops way too close to the enemy units however i can stop that for now and with these guys definitely want to turn them a bit more like so get our phalanx units over there our swordsmen over here and what this does is it actually denies the enemy from targeting your units. We're going to move these guys a little bit up ahead. And as you can see, all the archers are currently engaged with my thorax, uh, with my thorax spearmen. And they are quite good. They will be able to tank a lot of the damage. And thereby, what this also does is it saves my uh, thoracitae, um phalangite from getting hit by archer fire meanwhile we can move up our entire army as well move up our cavalry okay wonderful and as you can see our pikemen have taken a very little to no losses go ahead just scare these units get them out of their comfort zone keep moving keep moving these guys as well General can come all the way up there. Get our Galatian swordsmen around. And now these guys can start to get engaged. That's wonderful. Our general can try to scare that unit. And uh, these two guys can go into that defensive formation. Meanwhile, the cavalry over here now can, can kind of engage these guys. Pikemen can get finally into that pike formation. Go ahead, attack. As you can see over here, General is done. A beautiful, beautiful maneuvering over here, as you can see. Um, 
we have managed to isolate all of their missile troops so their missile troops won't do much damage meanwhile over here on the right flank we can encircle as well perhaps done a little bit of a mess over here but nothing too significant meanwhile our general can charge and once our general charges actually into the center of everything we can inspire everyone let's go ahead our Galatians are nearly done over here. Get these guys out of their defensive formation. Get our Galatians up there. These Galatians can come here. And the spearmen can take the new spot over there. While these units can charge in the back. Get our general to charge this unit over here. Armenia backstab. Rest in peace, Sergeant Meme Suraj. Oh yeah, man. Absolute uh, backstab. With that, go ahead, inspire. Wonderful charge. And I uh, can use these guys to charge into the backs over here. And just look at that battle. We have taken just two losses so far. Absolutely min-maxed it over here. And uh, uh, I forgot, this uh, Falangite unit also took a bit of damage. And with that final charge from Mithridates himself, the war is over, or the battle is over. In fact, even the war is over, so that's good. Go ahead and end the battle. Tigran is getting greedy. And as you can see, we just lost 14 units. Very good army, I would say, that Pontus has. Always. Shinya Germer. Yeah, the Hague always does that. Damn. <laughs> Armenian backstabbers. Yeah, I actually think Armenia should... Uh, and I'm going to report that to Dresden. Actually, I think Armenia should be... And the reason being is that they are treacherous. I think Armenia, is, in this campaign at least, should not be treacherous, considering the fact that they are, they have been steadfast allies of uh, Mithridates. And of course, not just allies, they are married. Um, Igranis himself is married to our daughter. Anyways, um, it seems that uh, T. Dizzle, I believe, wanted me to just burn the world so let's go ahead and loot the settlement because it is persian and we have uh, wiped out the cilicians and uh, we can go ahead and just repair these buildings as well we do have a lot more money to use at our disposal thanks to that all right can we turn on the taxes over here and how much will that actually give me just 200 so i'm Completely fine with keeping it off. Well, I'll have a look at this guy. I'm, no, I'm entirely not sure. I do believe it is the same turn. So we can get a, yet another spy. And I definitely want to. Because soon enough, we are going to take the fight to Roma. Okay, meanwhile, get another dignitary over here. So yet another tax rate personnel. And uh, that's quite good, actually. But I I think the need of the hour is to, of course, get a guy who is better at cultural conversion. Speaking of cultural conversion, we can move this guy finally into Syria. Go ahead and deploy him to help with that cultural conversion. Meanwhile, we can take this dignitary who has leveled up. Spec him up for that eventual province of uh, Asia. Get him all the way close to Ankara. Uh, we have also leveled up our army traditions. And I kind of forgot which one is a good army tradition. I believe this one, the ammunition, is quite good. And... Hmm... Uh, battle captives? No. Uh, morale. I think this charge bonus for all units was quite good. So I am going to go ahead and take that. And uh, yeah, just going to leave that as it is for now. Meanwhile, uh, speaking of Tigranes himself, treacherous, of course you are. We are going to at least ask for a non-aggression. You're not going to ask. Join the war against the Seleucids? Nope. Okay, so we're going to have to be careful now. Our western flank is completely, uh, our eastern flank rather, is completely open. 
the Granis could attack us, and we're going to have to keep a watchful eye for that. Meanwhile, we're going to have to kind of deal with armies over here. Our first target is, of course, going to be Nicomedia, Iconian, Tide. And then we're going to try to push into Pesinus. Uh, quick look at our diplomacy. The Ptolemies, will the you trade with me? You You're on low for now. All right, let's go ahead, just end this turn. Um, quick look. We have an army tradition. Entire province can have an edict. Go ahead, get that public order. And... Uh, a... Hmm. Save up some of that. Can we get any more agents? We can't. And now, what I definitely want to do is uh, recruit some characters. And this gives public order as well as improved wealth from culture. So, definitely want to get that guy from the court nobles. Raise an army. Put him up in Sinope. And rename him Hegemon 4 Pessinus. Alright, perfect. Wonderful. And he will soon become... This, this horse unit is also quite good and it does come from the Zenoi uh, population. Meanwhile, these guys still, still nothing. I think I'm still in the same turn. Uh, okay. Go ahead, build up that. Temporarily into an economic province help with our economy. And with that, I think I can go ahead and end the turn. And uh, I think ultimately what we want is to definitely just attack all of this over here and march into um, Sulla and attack Roma once again. Uh, Adam Weston, glad you can make it. Yes, uh, uh, I remember you from uh, yesterday's comment that you were finally happy. I do apologize all of you uh, for releasing uh, the Roma episode a little bit late. I am going to be a little bit behind schedule with the Roma campaign until this weekend because I do have a lot of catching up to do. However, I will, uh, you know, catch up eventually and uh, it won't be that much delay. It'll just be a day delay. So or one day in delay. So instead of Monday, it's Tuesday, and instead of Thursday, it'll be Friday uh, for this week. However, in the next week, I should be up to speed. To Ares, Seleucids have declared war, war upon me. Even I yearn for your okay, are they going to attack me? They could attack Tapsicos. And uh, I wonder if I should just annihilate the Seleucids now. Is the reshade you use CPU heavy or is it low end CPU friendly? I really do not know, but I think reshade doesn't affect uh, my CPU as much. As you can see, I'm turning on and off the reshade. And as far as I can tell, my FPS isn't really dropping. However, I don't think that's a very good metric or a standard. Well, I can see if I can piece out the Seleucids. I will listen carefully. It is on low. And since the Seleucids are award me... Take. Will you now agree to a non-aggression? Okay, non-aggression payment. I'm gonna pay you for it. I don't care. Nope. Wow. Okay. Okay, so... Meanwhile, Tapsicos, you don't have a very good army. And you won't be able to deal with the Seleucids should they decide to attack. What we are going to do... Ah, I think I took the wrong ability. To charge. Morale. Uh, yeah, I think I took the wrong ability. Should have gone for the increased, I think. Melee defense for all cavalry units, so I can't go ahead and take that one. Uh, meanwhile, move a Mithridates back. Two words, Apsicos. I'm not going to take any chances. Going to try to sabotage his supplies. Have a quick look if I succeed. And no, I do not. Meanwhile, Antiochia, the garrison is looking quite good. 
I'm kind of happy with that. What I can do is actually move this guy into Tapsicos. Wonderful. And move Mithridates himself towards Antiochia. Should be able to replenish. And uh, hey, things are looking quite good over here. Now upgrade that. Okay. Our dignitary can keep moving. Meanwhile, this dignitary over here, deploy. Quick look. No. Just our champion. Can he see? Now, I don't know if I can actually get these units. However, I'm not going to wait any longer. I'm actually uh, going to start moving him. If I do not get him in the next turn, I will go ahead and move this army down south. And uh, that's going to be quite unfortunate that I can't recruit those units. Uh, meanwhile, over here, I do wonder if we can get better. No, we can't. All right. Let's, let's go ahead, have a quick look at our politics, as I do believe we are soon to run out of protected. And let's go ahead and end the turn. Have a quick look at the chat once again. Agalos uh, Phileris, welcome, welcome to the stream. So glad you could join us and so happy that you guys could finally catch the stream. Really happy. Those of you who are in the stream, 37 of you, I see you in the stream. Go ahead, like the stream, please. <laughs> you know, there are only 14 likes and uh, definitely want to... Uh, want to get that algorithm up and running so that there are more subscribers and uh, like i mentioned i don't really care about the subscribers but i really do care for your appreciation as it does uh, quite make my day and of course the seleucids have decided to attack me over here they just have a bunch of turiophora and these guys can be quite dangerous Ooh, okay i'm wondering if i should take the battle and I should actually, you know what, I'm going to save it. I'm going to take the battle, fight the Seleucids. And uh, now they have Syrian archers. So we have a decent field battle over here. Pretty straight plains. Quickly go ahead, organize our army, get that reshade all ready. Okay, perfect. And these guys over here, put them up in that defensive formation. Perfect. One, two, three. Pikemen. We are going to be severely outnumbered over here, so we definitely need the oblique order in this battle. Get Mithridates on the prestigious right flank. These guys. And over here. Perfect. Go ahead and start the battle. Quick look at what we are looking at as far as enemy is concerned. Just a light cavalry over here. What is their speed? The speed is 8. So it should be a little bit tough for us to catch up to them. On the left flank we are looking at... Well, they do have a lot of Turio Forai. And they have three ammunition. That is insane. That's gonna... That's really gonna hurt. That is... Definitely gonna hurt. So what I am gonna need to do in order to... Um, counter that is actually use my war units as well as the units that can tank those missile damage better little bit more aggressively push these guys up ahead as well keep our pikemen slightly uh recessed so that they don't get hit by those javelin units and pike units are quite strong however of course the downside to a pike unit is that they definitely um can get absolutely annihilated and it seems like on the right flank we don't need our cavalry so we can move our cavalry Mithridates himself onto that left flank quick look at Mithridates himself where is he all right and there he is so far he's been quite good and can go ahead and charge at these units should be a very good charge 
they are light units so they do have precursor javelins definitely they're gonna lose a lot and one of the things i'm gonna pause over here once again that i do recommend with micromanaging we did take a significant amount of damage on that charge. We lost 10 units. But one of the things is this cavalry unit has a speed of 6 versus the cavalry unit has a speed of 8. So what will happen, especially when they're losing, they are going to pull out. And when they pull out in whichever direction, we're not going to be able to chase them. However, once they pull out successfully, they're going to charge back into us. So the best thing to do is to actually not chase them. And what you want to do is actually put your cavalry on that guard mode so that you don't chase them. So that you can get yet another charge off on them. As you can see over here, our troops are getting thrown. Our javelins are getting used against us. Okay. Get these guys a little bit forward. And as you can see, see they didn't chase them, which is good. And now we can get a clean charge off on these units which will be great because we can't catch them we definitely can't catch them meanwhile this clean charge will help us significantly and we do have a gap in the center that we will soon need to fill however as far as the uh, spears are concerned it seems like most of the spears have been thrown quickly on the uh, left flank we can see the cavalry is charging us so we're gonna just move out like this this is a heavier shock cavalry go ahead and deploy charge over here get these guys a little bit pinned up okay group three can charge they are going into diamond formation and what we are going to do is we're going to break the charge by charging into the sides of this unit it does get caught now we can charge with mithridates himself so quite a bit of uh, very good micromanagement over there. Meanwhile, we can move our phalanx unit up slowly. And now once again, you can see this unit is trying to pull out. It does have a speed of 8. We are going to try to chase him. However, he might be able to escape. And there should be another general unit. Um... Yeah, it's all the way over here. Get this cavalry to kind of intercept. Now, this cavalry is going to charge my general. We are going to inspire in preparation for that. And then we can use this cavalry to kind of charge, counter charge as well. So, as you can see, pretty good micromanagement over here. Hello, Adrian Tandereki. Hello, brother. How are you? Uh, good to have you here with us. And as you can see, pretty good charge. Not that much damage, though. And we are just going to reform over here. Really quickly. Try to get these units back into the fray. We can go ahead and charge once again into these units okay good all right meanwhile our pikemen can move up to support a little bit just move them up like so these guys can move up over here and move our swordsmen back okay this guy is done, so we can get our cavalry on the left flank. Our general Mithridates can meanwhile hunt down their general. And we do have a free swordsman over here that we are going to maneuver in that narrow formation. We'll get him over there. Then move him over here. He should be able to maneuver quite effectively. And we can... Hit these units in the flank as well. Okay. So all in all, we can get our... You know what? I'm actually going to do the narrow formation thing over here as well. Get these guys up here. As you can see, these guys are nearly moving out. Which means we should have our cavalry free 
to attack. And of course these guys turn around just at the right time. Okay. Go ahead, hit those guys in the back. Okay, here and here, get this, send a cavalry to hit that unit. I think it's all out of ammunition, so it's no longer a threat. Meanwhile, these guys have finally gotten into position for that flank. Go ahead and start hitting them. And our javelin troops are going to do quite a lot of damage to this unit over here. Get these guys into that narrow formation. They can ignore them over there. And over here, beautiful flank, as you can see. And massive charges as well over here on that left flank. And we have gotten rid of that unit. Let's go ahead, get over here, get this cavalry back here. General can pull behind. These guys need to come here. And as you see, because they have that narrow formation, just how look how beautifully they completely avoid the enemy. And you can really just move around so nicely when you have a narrow formation. Meanwhile, our Peltas over here can go ahead, pack those units. Our main general can also just line up over here. These units go ahead, charge into the backs. As you can see, nice charge over there. Beautiful, easy flanking. However, with that, let us end the battle. We could actually chase them, but uh, let's just end the battle. It's not a big deal. And just going to have a quick look at the... Uh, but you see 48 likes. Okay, that must be... Um, that must be because I haven't refreshed the page yet. And uh, take off guard mode for cavalry in uh, group 3. Now, I blow your ears. I just explained why guard mode is quite good. It's because it... Uh, especially when your cavalry is slow, you don't want to be chasing a faster cavalry. You want to get a clean charge, second charge into the cavalry unit. So, uh, if you ca have faster cavalry, then by all means chase down the enemy cavalry. But if you don't, then definitely guard mode is better. So that you can get a second charge off onto the enemy unit. Meanwhile, I hope Armenia kind of uh, takes out Palmyra, because that would put us in quite a good situation. Okay, we can upgrade our army to get even better armor. We could attack this army over here. We are going to go ahead and do that and uh, can auto resolve this one. 82%, I'm, I'm willing to take those odds. Ooh. Now I could attack them outside over here. That will call out the garrison of Palmyra. However, I'm not sure. But before I do that, let's go ahead and get some further replenishment. Now I'm not sure of the auto resolve. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to see if the auto resolve actually works. And if it is a good auto resolve, I'm going to take it. And it's pretty bad auto resolve, so I'm actually going to move back. I don't want to fight the the lucids that much. I I don't really care about Palmyra to be honest. And uh, definitely want to focus on Roma. So what we are going to do is going to move back to Antiochia. I think it has decent enough population to replenish. Move back to Antiochia. Okay. Fantastic. And we can deploy our spy over here on the crossroads. And see if we can get our non-aggression with the Armenians. Pay them a bit more. Wow, they seriously do not like us. Yep. Okay, that's going to be quite difficult. But we can see if we can piece out the Seleucids at least. And they are on low, so guessing we have to fight it. And over here, as you can see, we can't really recruit those horse units. So that pretty much 
Um, kind of sucks. So, well, I guess it is what it is. Mm. Meanwhile, let's get a barracks upgraded over there in Tapsicos so that we have a better garrison over there. And of course, we can also recruit the remainder of the troops that we need. We're going to have to go with our regular um, Thorax Lancers, which are quite good. They're pretty respectable. However, nothing too fancy. Go ahead, build yet another cattle pens over here to improve our economy. Uh, meanwhile, I did have a spy as well. Can move him towards Petinia. Have a quick look of what's going on in Nicomedia. We soon want to declare war against the Romans. And I do believe uh, Salah kind of can beat the Mariani. So Speak definitely we'll have to watch out for that. As you can see, the Mariani have already lost Rome. Because they should typically have Rome as the capital. But uh, they do have Syracuse as the capital. So the Mariani on the back foot over here. Ah, to chase the infantry. Yes, absolutely. You're right. To chase the infantry, you definitely want to get the guard mode off. And uh, yeah, okay. So let's go ahead and end the turn. So we're still waiting to fight the war against the Romans and quite frankly I am pretty bummed out that the Armenians have kind of betrayed us and I do believe they have captured Ahatra from the uh, from the Parthians so that's quite good actually but what I really hope is for them to wipe out the Seleucids kind of protect me from And the Seleucids do retreat back into Palmyra. Hmm. Perfect. Alright, Apollinaris. Civil war. So we do have a chance of a civil war. Meanwhile, our champion has also leveled up. So we can get that extra army upkeep. For sure, the unit experience as well as the campaign movement. That's always helpful. Meanwhile, over here, we are almost at the maximum Hellenic culture. So that's also good news. And uh, definitely want to build up the barracks over there as well. Hmm. I think even Syria, to be honest, is a good province. For, um, for the economy. Because you have wine over here. And I believe uh, wine gives you... No, actually, I think wine gives you agricultural instead of commerce. But if wine gives you commerce, then it's quite good because you can kind of do a commerce industrial combination over there. Meanwhile, let's just level up our spy as well. Don't need him. Can give this dignitary over here this ability. And in about three turns, we are going to be having a civil war if we don't take care of these court nobles so let's actually find a spouse for him who can organize games in some provinces so can organize games in Caucasus and as you can see that improves the loyalty as well of the party meanwhile <sighs> Cleopatra is not doing a good job in bed with Tigranes it seems because Tigranes hates us I don't believe she assassinates him later on. If I'm not mistaken. However, what we can do is we have a good amount of um, gravitas. So we can actually begin to, you know, engage in some politics. And what we want to do is use praise to improve uh, the zeal of this character. Try Petina. As you can see, she has only three zeal. So if we click on this, select her zeal will increase by one and that's quite good meanwhile we want to return the favor and select her to do a favor which will improve the authority of this character which is at three get her authority to four and that's good and 
ideally you want to have six authority and six um, zeal. And once you have that, then you can send them on leisure time for a vacation and that will improve their cunning. And once you have a high enough authority and cunning, then all of these actions, which are pretty much your political intrigues, uh, will be easy to carry out because you do need a high level of zeal, authority and cunning. So the main purpose is, of course, to be able to assassinate, to spread rumors, etc., to embezzle funds, to entice, all of that sort of uh, things. Uh, meanwhile, also have a look over here. Tax rate is a slightly low. We do need to balance out court nobles, court nobles and court nobles. We need, this guy is pretty good for the tax rate. And we are going to deploy him as a, I believe he should be in charge of Pesinus. So we are going to raise him over here in our capital. As yet another Hegemon. Hegemon 1, Pergamon. In anticipation, of course, of Pergamon when we finally take it from the Solani. Meanwhile, the Seleucids, you are still pretty annoying. We are going to... It's going to be a little bit tough dealing with these armies, I'm not going to lie. Because they are stacking up over there. Duties, Let's put this guy back into Antiochia. And uh, get uh, this character back down south towards Antiochia. In order to transfer off uh, some of those um, some of those units. And if he is in Trapezos, then he can actually... I don't think he's in Trapezos, but in the next turn, if he's in Trapezos, he can actually recruit uh, some cavalry as well. And as far as cavalry is concerned, we have several options. We have the uh, Ponticae Skirmisher Cavalry, and they're quite uh, cost effective, I would say. They're quite comparable, uh, as we saw earlier on, to uh, these Pontic Medium Cavalry. However, the Pontic Medium Cavalry is significantly more expensive. They do have better stats. Only, only just, not really all that much better. So it would be among these two units, I would say so. Uh, or we could go for, of course, these guys over here. These are more melee cavalry, Pontic cavalry. Or we could also go for some horse archers. So let's see. Um, what am I actually going to do? I'm going to select some uh, horse units. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to create a, a vote. For it. So let's just do that and let you guys decide which uh, early cav should I use. Um, Merc, let's say the Merc um, Cappadocian Lancers, Melee, Horse Archer. Or Jav Cav. Let's see. Okay. You guys are going to decide now which Cav I am going to use. So like all of you watching, I would suggest because in the next turn, I will be um, in um, the province of Bithynia at Pontus. So I will be able to recruit some cavalry. So you have to vote right now so that I can end the vote and take a decision based on that vote. Okay. Let's move our army into Trapezos. Quick look at the vote. Seven of you have voted. I am just going to wait just a little bit more. Give you guys some more time to, to vote. And please vote for the cavalry that you would like to see me use. 
while the Adam, non aggression, the hour see you at war with the Serakis. Ptolemies, can we still get a trade agreement with you? Nope. As far as politics is concerned, we have just two more turns for our protected. What we can do over here, send this character to improve the public order of the Bosphorus. Not really required. The Bosphorus has kind of leveled up. And uh, can actually start to recruit our second army as well, Legio 1. I think as far as Tapsos is concerned, we do have a decent garrison. Meanwhile, just have a quick look at the Pelucids. Yes, hi on the peace agreement. So let's words, actually peace you out. Perfect. I can settle on these terms. Greetings. And uh, keep it that way. Meanwhile, we'll have a quick look at the uh, vote. And I am going to go ahead and end the vote. And it's the mercenary Cappadocian Lancers that have won the vote. So... We are going to go ahead and we can get a couple of them. Go ahead, improve them. And even uh, this champion has leveled up. We have even our dignitary over here. Get that cultural conversion. We want to convert Fasis as soon as we can. And uh, all right, that's good. I think for this turn, we are quite done. Just have a quick look at, I believe we can get more Cappadocian Lancers, and I definitely want more Cappadocian Lancers. However, we need 6,000 to upgrade the main settlement over here. And although two hours are up, which means um, I might end the stream soon, but I am going to, since this is the first episode, I am going to play for three hours. And I'm actually going to put that up for a vote. So let's see if you guys uh, should I continue for another hour. And uh, yeah, if you guys uh, decide that I continue for another hour, I will continue for another hour. This being the first episode. And of course, it did take me time to kind of uh, get the game uh, rolling. Um, meanwhile, as far as the economy is concerned... We need that economy to build up over there. Over here. Hmm. Can I? Yes. Okay, that's perfect. I can increase. Switch on the taxation over there. Can I switch on the taxation over here as well? Wonderful. And uh, looks like overall the taxation can be left on. And. Okay. Meanwhile, I also want to put the taxes on high. That will make my political party a little bit more disloyal. However, I don't care. What I do care about is the public order, which is not that bad. We can go ahead, just end the turn, get a bit more money so that we can recruit some more Cappadocian Lancers in the next turn and transfer off the army to uh, Mithridates. And of course, we will be attacking some of the uh, Roman client states. And uh, we can't really attack them you know using diplomacy since they aren't really at war with anyone so we're gonna have to attack them head on and get uh in a, into a war with Solani. um smithy von 37 what is up bro summary nothing much man everything's going good i hope you're doing well as well and uh, glad to have you with us in the stream do we get this uh one extra hour poll every hour <laughs> i wish i wish i could and most of you who have been uh, following me in the past, uh, who have been subscribers to my channel in the past, would know that I actually stopped live streaming because uh, two months ago, I became a father to a lovely uh, baby girl. And due to that reason, I had to focus on, you know, helping my spouse um, take care of the child. However, things uh, are falling back into the groove. So that's quite good. And meanwhile, I do have a very supportive a wife who does allow me to you know to do guy stuff so that is also really helpful let's go ahead and upgrade uh, this settlement now we have three options we have uh, this option over here which just says antioch and that gives four growth per turn 
We also have commercial Antioch, which gives more wealth and uh, just two growth per turn. And we have finally the one growth per turn. So I typically like to go for the more growth per turn. So let's just go and get Antioch. And the reason being is because uh, actually, if you look at it, um, we're not going to upgrade that. Um, if you look at this, this is eventually going to be a military province, which means I will turn off the taxes. However, for now, I can get the taxes back down to low or I can keep them up for just one more turn. Because I won't be having any civil wars. Meanwhile, quick look at some of the characters who can improve. Public order in Galatia, a Cappadocia. Uh, quickly move this army. And I don't want to go into Galatia, Cappadocia. I want to stay here where I can get my uh, Cappadocian Lancers. And Cappadocian Lancers are quite good because they do come from that Xenoi population class. And speaking of Xenoi population class, um, what we are going to do is move... Mithridates up north. Further up north, okay. Somewhere close enough. Poseidon guide and can we recruit yet another Cappadocian? We can. We can get rid of this uh, Zistophoroi. 11, 14, 6. Actually, it's much better cav than the Cappadocian Lancers. However, we can get rid of him. And, oh, we can keep him, actually. I don't mind. And, yep. Okay. Meanwhile, we can have a quick look at our technology. I think the play would be to kind of uh, keep pushing down this line. However, we do want to improve our party loyalty. So let's go ahead and uh, go down the philosophy route. Meanwhile, some of our agents have leveled up. So let's also level up those agents in return quick look at politics we don't really need to do a lot of politics this is a mini campaign so politics isn't that important however i am just going to keep doing it on and off uh, so that i can keep my faction in check quick look at the chat okay uh, might not be able to watch the extra hour but we'll always watch later smithy Vaughn. Uh, glad to have you with us congratulations on your child understand to split a time for the fam yes absolutely family first always uh, Georgi Mikhailov. Uh, hello, how are you doing? Hope you're doing good and thank you for the uh, well wishes. Can you give me advice on DEI? I'm a se uh, seasoned Total War player but I struggle with DEI in particular. What exactly do you struggle with when it comes to Divide Tempera? Johnny Oak, thank you for the well wishes. Uh, if you can type that down, what exactly do you struggle with? Uh, I can definitely help you out over there. Andrew Fish, have to go now, friends. Uh, duty calls best, a live stream from the best actual and future DI content creator. Thank you so much, Andrew Fish. And you're definitely a very valuable subscriber to me. You have been one of the earliest subscribers to this channel back before when this channel was actually, um, you know, a really small channel. And uh, thanks for the manual installation info. Yes, for any of you who are looking for better performance, I do recommend going to my... Uh, tactical guide series or my announcement playlist and over there you will find a guide on how to manually install mods and i recommend that for anyone who is trying to um you know improve their fps all right let's transfer our armies over here and we should have an 18 stack two stacks are reserved for the cavalry uh, for the elephants which we are going to take eventually Can have a quick look at our politics everything seems to be fine is our taxes still on high they are on high so we need to turn them down to low so that our loyalty is pretty uh, decent and uh, as far as public order is concerned it seems just the bosphorus has a little bit of public order issues meanwhile i do remember i disbanded mithridates we can reinstate the legacy the reason I disbanded him is because I do want to get a couple more of these uh, Scythian heavy archers. They are quite good units and I also recommend the Scythian warriors actually. 
A 200 men strong, 37 armor, 10 melee attack, 10 melee defense. Not that great, but nothing that can't be fixed. Of course, that weapon damage is insane. Any weapon damage that's above 33 weapon damage is crazy. You have 19 base weapon damage and 14 armor penetration damage. This is one of the reasons why these units are quite good. I mean, that is 33 weapon overall weapon damage. Uh, another unit that's my favorite, as most of you know, is the Agrianian Axeman, available in the province of uh, Thracia as well as... Um, macedonia and the reason being is that they have a whopping 35 overall damage 20 from base and 15 from armor penetration and you can actually compare that with the room warriors speaking of room warriors i think i will also have access to those guys and i think they are actually locked behind a higher tier no hmm Okay, seems like uh, maybe they are locked behind this. Yes, yeah. so it seems like the Thracians are unlocked behind the uh, region of Panty Capaon. So if I upgrade the settlement to a level 3, then I will get access to the Romphaii. However, there are better Romphaii in Thracia, so I will not bother with that for now. Uh, that being said and done, we can go ahead in the turn. Nothing much to do here. Just have a quick look at our diplomacy. Seems like Armenia is doing quite well for itself. They are on moderate, so I am going to try my level best to try to get them back into the fold. Meanwhile, over here, we have an 18 stack with a garrison of 13. So in the next turn, we are definitely going to try to attack them. And in about 9 turns from now, we can get access to our Syrian elephants. All right, let's look at the uh, chat. Okay, Kopek, where are you from? If you don't mind me asking, Topkek. Firstly, welcome to the stream, Topkek. Glad to have you with us. I am originally from uh, India. I'm a citizen of India. However, I live abroad. I live in the Middle East, uh, which is why, uh, you know, it's not very easy to identify my accent. Uh, Indians can pick up on my accent, but a lot of people who are not from India will, will find it quite difficult to kind of estimate where I'm from. And that's because I've adopted a few uh, words as well as pronunciations from different cultures uh, as I have traveled the world quite a bit in my youth. At summary, the AI seems to be very aggressive in uh, DEI, uh, campaign AI. Okay, uh, Georgie, I would recommend uh, playing on normal difficulty. If you haven't played Dividea Tempera before, Playing it on a high difficulty is uh, not advisable for newcomers, and it's not a um, it's not a condescension by any means or form. If you are not playing it on that difficulty level, um, I would recommend it. I have only recently switched to a higher difficulty, and uh, that is because um, of the voting that has happened in my YouTube channel. So, definitely would recommend playing it on a normal difficulty however if you are playing it on a normal difficulty what i would recommend is try to play divide et impera for what it actually means divide and conquer so use one air faction against the other so as you can see i did want to declare war against uh Isidia, okay which would eventually draw me into the war against the solani and uh, that's not good um because you know uh, I don't want to be at war with the Solani. I want to minimize the number of factions I want to be at war with. However, I have no other option. I have to declare war against Pasidia directly. And uh, the reason being is because I don't really have... Uh, Pasidia is not at war with anyone. However, you know what? I can actually just declare war against Sulla. You know what? I'm actually going to do that. I'm actually going to march... My army's up north over here. Move my spy into Asia Minor. I mean, sniping out Asia from the Solani would be quite powerful. As you can see, Asia is undefended. So, and now I could attack, you know, I could attack Sala directly like this, you know. So just go ahead and declare the war. And as you can see, they'll call all of their client states into the war. Or I could just, you know, ask the Mariani to join the war against Sala. And that is definitely the way to play this game as far as politics is concerned. 
However, yes, that being said and done, let's quickly hop back into the game, see what is important. And uh, Tapsicos is on the border with Seleucid, so I definitely want to change the garrison. And I would recommend building up uh, these buildings over here. And now we are actually going to conserve a little bit of money until we can... We can turn off the taxes over here. And uh, I'm actually going to stop converting these buildings just yet. Because what I want to do is I definitely want to build up a couple more of those beautiful um, Gideon archers. And very quickly going to see if I have hit the cap with those Syrian Scythian archers. And it seems I can actually recruit six so i'm gonna go ahead and just recruit the six that i need and then i'm just gonna go ahead and dismantle this building because this building doesn't give me any benefit whatsoever it in fact even gives me nomadic cultural influence the only benefit it does give me is an increased uh an increased diplomacy with the nomads which isn't all that important especially if you can manage to defend your northern border over here meanwhile Hegemon for Pesenus has leveled up, so let's go ahead and give him that tax rate modifier. Go ahead, select the capable bureaucrat as well as the city governor. Let's go ahead and end the turn. Meanwhile, back to the uh, to the chat. Johnny Oak, you know something that would be kind of fun for the viewers and probably for you as well. Do you know Hearts of Iron 4? Some streamer YouTubers save their campaigns of their subs. And it would be fun in Total War Room 2. No. Hearts of Iron. Yes, I actually have the game, but I, I didn't understand what exactly are you uh, suggesting over here. To save the campaigns of their subs. Oh, okay, okay. I see what you mean. Um... So uh, basically what these guys do with uh, Paradox games, they have, they take the save games from their subscribers and then they kind of save those save games. They redeem themselves. Antonio Espinoza, I have to go to work summary. Great live stream. See you soon. Thank you, Antonio Espinoza. If you're still here, thank you so much for joining us for the live stream. Really appreciate it and uh, have a good day at work. All right, a governor has leveled up. We can get some more cultural... As well as Empire Maintenance. Focus on that. And... Over here we have a finished recruiting. But we can get more of these guys? That's insane. How many of these guys can we actually get? <laughs> I'm surprised. And uh, there's no way of actually seeing this. But... Let's just move our spy further down. Over there, deploy him. There's no way of actually seeing how many I can get. The more I can get, the actually it's going to be better. Is the more I can get for sure. I I do like these archers. They are quite powerful. Let's go ahead. Just attack. Well, no, I'm just going to do the mistake I told you not to do. <laughs> Right, so what are we going to do? We're going to go for the Mariani. We're going to join the war against the Salani. And they accept. Wonderful. And now they like us a little bit. But of course they don't like us just as much. Aggression. Meanwhile, let's have a quick look at the Tigranes. At the Hake. Will you join the war against the Salani? No, you won't. What about non-aggression? You're low. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and attack Pasinos. It is Greek culture, so that is good. Quick save over here. Hop right into the battle. And it's going to be our first battle against Roma. Easy battle against the garrison. And uh, exactly. Yeah, Johnny Oak. Yeah, exactly. Do you think it would be fun or good for content for Rome 2 uh, Total War. Yeah, actually, you know what? That would be a very good suggestion. I could actually do that uh, for any of you guys, actually. Oh my god, I hate this battlefield. So uh, not good for phalanx-type units, actually. However, 
We're not going to whine too much. Get all of our Cappadocian on the left flank. That's the eventual plan. Of course, get these guys over here. These guys can help out. So once you group up your entire army, you can actually uh, deploy them. Makes it easier to deploy them one by one. Get these guys up front. The narrower formation. Wonderful. Uh, we don't really need to do a lot for this battle. And the reason being is that it's going to be an easy battle. It's only a garrison. Pretty weak one at it. Spread out your cavalry like this. Hold down the control key and hit the down arrow key to reduce their formation. And as you can see now, they have a gap between them. Which is quite useful. Meanwhile, our archers can be kind of like this. And uh, you might be like, oh, the archers are sideways. Then you hold the control key once again. Hit the left arrow key and then they turn around like this. They have like a nice step formation over there. Get our Galatian swordsmen on that left flank as usual. Meanwhile, cavalry on the right flank with our general. That nicely aligned the entire army in that oblique order. Let's go ahead, start the battle. Move up our troops. Slowly march them forward. And uh, back to the chat. Summary, why do Rome... Why do Rome 2 perform better performance-wise when installed locally? Uh, the reason being is that uh, it when you manually install, right, it goes into the data folder and I believe it reads it as though it is part of the base game rather than it having to go through the uh, workshop folder and then having to read the file. So it kind of uh, skips a couple of steps from what I understand. It improves a little bit the FPS, a little bit, not too much, but what it mainly improves is that load time as well as the end turn times, which is uh, a gripe that most people have. Mitty one, I think a head-to-head -head or co-op campaign would be sick on your channel, maybe with another one of the Divided Emperor guys. You know what? I'm actually going to do that. A lot of people have been asking for it. And I actually am friends with quite a lot of uh, content creators. I probably will get my ass handed to me. I'm quite good against the AI. However, I don't have a lot of experience when it comes to multiplayer battles. And uh, definitely, I am going to try my hand at it for sure. I mean, why not? That is uh, the next step towards things. Quick look at these units. Uh, slingers. Alright, and there is a bit of a weird kind of a land over there. Which means we're going to do the same thing over here. Move up our... Engage that pike formation. Too little too late, actually. So some of our pikemen have been engaged. But we are not going to make it the case with all of our pikemen. So we are going to move up our archers so that we can hit their slingers. Meanwhile, the cavalry on the right flank can move all the way out. Okay, perfect. So I'm actually going to consider that co-op uh, suggestion, Smitty Vaughn. And uh, Daniel Lara, Johnny Oak. Okay. Popkek, I found you from Rome videos. As far as I'm terrible in the game, it's fun to watch. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you did. And uh, absolutely love uh, that uh, you're enjoying yourself and learning quite a bit from the Roma series. I'm going to move our spearmen like so. Kind of juke those archers to move behind. Meanwhile, our pike units can slowly march forward. Stop quickly. Galatian swordsmen can turn around like that. Go ahead, deploy that defensive formation on both sides. And defensive formation has taken a nerf in uh, this patch. Before it used to just give a flat out armor increment and 15 armor, but now it actually just increases uh, the shield. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. It still gives a flat out armor increment. I think that is incorrect. It should actually give a increment to your shield value rather than your armor value. And that is actually quite problematic. 
Hey, meanwhile, archers have done good over here. These these Kidian archers are absolutely wonderful. Meanwhile, our Phalangites can finally push up into that center over there. Get our cavalry on the left and right flanks around. General as well. And we can put them in that narrow formation for sure. And get these guys all the way over there. I really like the narrow formation. It is so good. And our archers can actually come over here. Because we have a huge blob of enemies that are hitting the flanks over here. So that means we can shoot them in the sides. So let's actually go ahead and use our archers over there. Quickly realign these troops. And realign those troops. Cappadocian Lancers. Looking good. Fantastic unit. And I uh, actually like them a lot. Meanwhile, our General Cav can charge over there. Archers here. These guys also. Come on. Unleash hell. Okay. These guys can come here. Javelin troops. General is going to charge into the backs of those units. Meanwhile, our Cappadocian Lancers have made quick work. Spread them all out like this. This is a good way to cycle your charge. You can inspire with the general while we're at it. And the way you do it is you actually line up. And you don't want your charge to kind of... Uh, I'm going to pause over here once all of the cavalry get into position. So that you guys can understand how to best do your charge. You don't want all your cavalry to be close and charging into the same unit. Because what they'll do, they will actually collide with each other. And that will reduce their impact of the charge. So what you actually want to do is to make sure that they hit different units and they want to have enough gap between them to improve the effectiveness of that. So another way you can do that is firstly, let's get these Galatian swordsmen into the fray. Select group three, control down key. And as you can see, it creates those gaps. And now your cavalry has just about enough gap. You can move them like this. And this cavalry is all the way out here on that left flank. So I'm going to move them over here. Now this cavalry is far enough. And now this cavalry is far enough. Perfect. As you can see, clean collision. A very clean collision. And then you can just hit the, the J key. And that usually, typically, if you do it in the right time, that typically uh, will pull back the cavalry. And that was a very good charge, actually, if you look at it. Meanwhile, this unit can start throwing the jabs over there. Uh, some of these uh, Ponticae uh, Machiopori taking a bit of extra damage, however, nothing too concerning. Go ahead, charge over here. As you can see, good charges all off. And uh, with that, I think the enemy should pretty much rout completely. And what I do enjoy is actually um, the lack of expert charge defense. Meanwhile, a quick look of what's going on over here. These units are staying pretty strong into the fight. We can charge our archers to hit that unit as well as these guys over here. Cavalry has pulled out again. Come on, Cappadocian Lancers. Let's have a look at these beautiful Cappadocian Lancers charging downhill with devastating effect. And downhill charges are also super devastating and Oh, we end the battle. Just a quick look at our Gideon archers. We didn't really get to see them all that well. However, okay, I think it's a bit too late for that. Let's actually just go ahead and end the battle. And with that, yes, we have captured our first settlement from the Solani. We have captured Pasinos, which means sooner or later our economy will be god here. And just look at those archers, man. 226 kills. 162 that is insane really did good and even the Cappadocian Lancers for that matter of fact uh, the Gallic Swordsmen are doing quite fine these guys um, the late Pontic Infantry they're pretty good considering they come from the third class population so I do recommend them 
All right, back to the chat. Hmm, uh, Daniel Lara. So uh, apparently a group of found a way to mod Attila's map, creating a new city which can be interacted with. This in theory could apply for Rome too. Exciting news in my opinion. Yes, definitely. Would definitely want to get in on that action. We are just going to peacefully occupy Pessinus, considering it is Hellenic. And uh, what we are going to do is... Uh, we're going to dismantle a couple of these buildings and focus on uh, converting it into that economic province. Meanwhile, our dignitary over here can finally make his way towards uh, Ephesus, towards the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. These characters over here can stay where they are at. And I think pretty much in the next turn we should be able to level up. Meanwhile, let's get some more abilities over here. And finally have a look. 9% skill against barbarian factions. Or we can go for the 9% campaign movement. We're not really fighting a lot of barbarians, are we? So I think the play would be attack missile range is quite good. But it doesn't give a missile damage. So you know what, I'm actually going to go for the extra melee attack for now. That is more important. And the 9 ammunition is also pretty good. I should focus on that next time. However, a quick look at whether we can get some more of these archers. It seems like we are at the maximum we can get. So in the next turn, I can go ahead and dismantle that building. However, for now, this... Uh, has also leveled up so we can actually build a temple over here let's go ahead end the turn have a quick look at politics minus five okay that's not too bad and back to the chat we can see in my opinion city defense or attack in the Empire are so underwhelming most big cities especially level three upgrades are the same when i say divide Empire, i mean the all game well, I'll tell you the reason why that is, Johnny Oak, and the reason is um, garrison units never upgrade with reforms, unfortunately. That's the way the game works, that's the way the engine works. So the way they have to find or make garrison units for the game is that they have to find a sweet spot, alright? So the sweet spot is pretty much, um, you know, having a unit that's neither as good as the final reforms nor as bad as the first reforms. Pretty much a unit that is good all around. And when I say good all around, I mean they're not good at all. <laughs> so definitely, I'd say the main um, the main battles in Divide et Impera that is actually good is, um, is of course, um, you know, the battles against other faction armies rather than, um, you know, garrison units. All right, uh, increase in rank of a hero. And we are at war with the Solani, so we get some extra money. That's always helpful. Meanwhile, we can upgrade our champion as well. Have a quick look. All the households are expanding. And speaking of households, I really want to improve some of the abilities of our generals. Uh, let's go ahead and go down this route. Let me turn off the taxes over here. We can get a little bit over here. We have the Sea of Pontus, which will give a minus 13 wealth from maritime commerce. Go ahead and, of course, build up those industrial buildings over here. Get that to improve the growth rate. Meanwhile, our dignitary can push deeper. And Mithridates himself can push a deeper towards Ephesus, which means we can technically, would it take three turns to get there? So could technically just disband this guy. Disband him. Okay, and in the next turn, we're going to deploy him in Pessinus as a governor. Uh, 
Meanwhile, since we have a little bit more money, let's go ahead clean some of those buildings over there. Our dignitary over here is doing quite well. And just a quick look. Okay, this unit is done. So we can start to move him down towards Amasea. And uh, what we are going to do is turn off the taxi. No, keep the taxation on in this province. We are going to dismantle this building. Got quite a few units, as most of you have voted for it. Let's go ahead, end the turn. And uh, end the poll for the live stream. Okay, perfect. We have about 15 minutes left for the live stream. 94% of you voted for the extra hour. And it definitely has been a long live stream. Ah, oh, great. Okay, back to the chat. Let's see. So the end turns are taking a bit longer now, which I like, which gives me a little bit of time to chat with uh, you guys in the channel. Apart from oh, a part of the units defending the city, the city itself could be different depending on the faction and not the culture. I completely agree with that. I wish that was possible. And honestly speaking, sieges are not realistic. I don't want to spoil it for you guys. But uh, any of you who do know uh, quite a bit about history will know that world settlements or forts or world settlements were never really we just walls. And we do have a war with uh, Bithynia and they might actually attack Sinus. Okay, that's actually quite uh, good for us. We're going to auto-resolve this. Unfortunately, we're going to lose some of that. Uh, I should have seen this coming. We are going to lose some of our uh, Hellenic culture, which is a little bit sad. Oh, they do not take out Hellas. Oh, sorry, uh, Pessinus, which is kind of good. They actually just raised the settlement. I think. I have no idea what they did. But regardless, uh, they are not going to be able to escape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move my army all the way up possible. They are within range, so the only way they can escape Pessinus now is to attack it once again. What I'm going to do is move my army up there once again. Uh, redeploy my court noble, reinstate the legacy of uh, Pessinus, put him up over there. Let's see. Okay, we didn't lose that much of population, unfortunately. I mean, fortunately. <laughs> And uh, even this guy has leveled up, so let's go ahead and get that extra tax rate. Quickly have a look at some of our traits and salaries. We want to get that public order for our governor generals. Extra tax rate is always good. Meanwhile, with this character, can we get... Okay, wonderful. As far as Mithridates himself is concerned, we don't need the gravitas. We can get the spear attack. And uh, get that uh, extra armor is pretty good. And over here... The extra authority for leading our armies. Okay, we have five more turns before we will get access to the Syrian elephants. So let's go ahead and put this guy into Antiochia. He will level up over there. Right, and... This is kind of good because what happens next is we will have an undefended Nicomedia. And uh, that's actually quite good. Uh, for us. Meanwhile, a quick look at our politics. Of course, we are at a 10% risk of a civil war. However, we can send this character to improve the public order in the province of Asia. And we are now getting only minus 44 per turn. And uh, the loyalty is under control. Meanwhile, a quick look over here. As you can see, we are still struggling a bit. As far as our... We can level up this character as well to give them a bit more loyalty. And also marry off this character. Fantastic. With that, I think we can go ahead and end the turn. And we can get back to the chat. And as I said, the city is unrealistic. What is realistic about the cities is that each wall settlement actually had a ditch in front of the wall. Which made it extremely tough. Uh, attackers could not just walk up to the walls. Because they'd have to go into the ditch... And then, then they would be able to attack the walls. So it wasn't so easy to just move ladders or siege engines to the walls. What you'd have to actually do is fill up the ditch 
and then you could move your siege equipments to the walls because the ditch would prevent any siege equipments from approaching the walls without any opposition. So yeah, definitely uh, wall settlements are a lot easier to fight in Divided Empire or any total war game. Back at war with the Seleucids. This is a little bit annoying and they might actually try to attack me over here. I'm gonna have to see. I don't know why Armenia is taking its sweet time to deal with the Seleucids. Spy over here. But this should make for an interesting uh, second episode, really, being attacked on all sides. Um, hey, we can level up at Tapsicos. And I don't really want to. I mean, 16? That's pretty good, actually, if you ask me. Meanwhile, this guy still keep marching. March your way down south. Go all the way to Tapsicos. Okay, now a quick look at the garrison over here. It's not going to be enough to deal with uh, this Bithynian army. If we attack the Bithynian army, it's going to move away. And now we can attack it full on. We're going to fight this battle. And after which we probably will make our way either towards Nicomedia or we will save that for the next episode. Alright, so the Bithynians actually committed a grave mistake. We do have a bad battle over here if I should say so in the sense that the terrain doesn't really favor phalanx type of fighting however we are not too heavily dependent on phalanx units thankfully we do have a bit more of a maneuverable and flexible army so let's go ahead select that quick select everything group one for the general our Scythian archers don't worry this time we will definitely see what they look like um cappadocians ponticais get our thorax spearmen over here quickly adjust them so that they stay together get our pikemen in that regular formation i wish you could also save up army formation so that it wouldn't take forever to do this thankfully in let's play series i'm able to you know edit this part out however of course in any other series i have to kind of you know or like in the live stream i kind of have to show you guys and uh, that is quite problematic is that it does take time into something that's totally avoidable with that we are ready to start the battle Let's uh, march up our troops over there. And while we do that, let's have a quick look at our, I believe, insert kind of shows. Nope, maybe it's delete. There we go. Here we have our Scythian archers. Quite a good looking, mean, mean looking unit. And of course, you can see our oblique formation slowly making its way across. And I think if I hit the E key over here, nope, I think it's insert. And then I can scroll out like this. And maybe, nope, still not very used to these sort of things. And uh, no, I think I have to escape again and activate, of course, this. And now I can manually control and toggle over to different units as you can see here our Cappadocian Lancer is looking quite good go ahead escape now so that we don't botch up everything what I really like about Dividate Impera and what I really enjoy as being a model of Dividate Impera is that I absolutely get to make units far more interesting uh, appearance wise of course uh, all of the stats have been done we by Cam the and the others. Use. Archers. Okay, it seems like we have a bit of a situation over here. We have Jav Cav. Paphlagonian Cavalry. So we're going to have to pull back our cavalry over there. Meanwhile, select our whole army. Put them on the march. Uh, and Jav Cav. Not going to be possible for us to chase them down. 
So the one thing we can do is actually use our own missile troops to deal with the Jav Cav while moving our own Cav into the um, into the um, into the thicket or into the woods so that we don't have to deal with them. You get these guys over here quickly put these guys into their formation and uh, now what we can do is try to get in and around this unit okay this javkav is taking quite a bit of damage zoom out to get a, a general overview of what's going on and of course our phalangites are taking a bit of damage get our troops up there quickly these troops up there quickly our phalange take and march also in quick fashion meanwhile over here the javkav is entirely done which is great news i'm not going to chase them down what i'm going to chase is i'm going to chase the missile units quickly get these guys as well into the fray our archers skidian archers are amazing really and uh Definitely get the Galatian warriors over here. Quickly get these guys into the defensive. Oh, they're already in the defensive formation. That was kind of a mistake on my part. And what I do like about having uh, these unit groups, it makes it very easy. You guys might be wondering how am I so quick. It's because uh, I recommend grouping up uh, the units you use the most in groups 1, 2, um, 3 and four because they are the easiest to access with your fingers as your fingers will be on the W, A, S and D keys for the most of the battle to move around the camera and so forth. Our general is under attack. Meanwhile, uh, this cavalry, and now this is where you get to decide what units you want to attack. So this is where, um, you know, this is where it gets important as to how you help. Now, if I charge into this light spear unit, what actually happens is that okay? Our Jackav has made a return. What actually happens is that I will be able to free up both of these units. Meanwhile, we can charge all of our units over here quickly, get them into that narrow formation, select individually units. This guy can come all the way over here and inspire the whole army. And as you can see, now we have dealt with this unit. Get these two archers over here. I don't know why they decided to attack physically that unit. Narrow formation. Select group 7 manually. Get them into that narrow formation. And we don't really need to get rid of uh, these um, units. Uh, the reason being is that they have already retreated once, so that means, and with that we have nearly surrounded the enemy over here, you can see. Yeah, with that, um, what happens is they will be wiped out, so nothing much they can do over here. Mithridate is to chase. This unit is ready, go ahead, redeploy. This unit is ready, go ahead. This unit is ready, go ahead, attack here. As you can see, beautiful encirclement over here. Just fantastic. I mean, if we didn't have to, if we actually had to chase this army, this is absolutely the best case scenario you could possibly have uh, in order to deal with, you know, enemy units. Now, our pikemen did manage to take some damage. We can use these archers to hit over here, but... Um, we are in a Hellenic province, so we should be able to replenish. It's not much of a big deal. And of course, we are going to get our Cappadocian Lancers over here. We're going to fast forward. And with that, it seems the battle is done. Nice. Okay, let's, oh, let's go ahead and end the battle. My reshade was kind of glitching over there. It's a pretty good battle, considering we wiped out a... Um, Indian army, which means we can actually just attack Nicomedia, prevent them from uh, gaining any upper hand. And as you can see now, 300 kills by this unit over here. Totally worth it.
Got to go, Smitty Vaughn. Okay, thank you so much. We'll watch the rest later. There's not much left to go, so definitely um, you don't have much left to catch up. We are going to go ahead and slave all these guys. Wipe out that army. And maybe we could just auto-resolve uh, the Siege of Nicomedia. Um, as it will have... Uh, it will have... We can actually improve the missile damage also over here. Get some more for the cav as well. And we could just auto-resolve over here at Nicomedia. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. Take out Nicomedia once and for all. Let's peacefully occupy the settlement. Faction is wiped. We should have a decent enough population to replenish for the next turn, which is also great. Um, meanwhile, over here... Okay, this character is still trying to make his way across. And we can see if we can piece out the Seleucids as well. We are not known Peace. As Moderate, they accept. Okay, you that's good. I am and, uh, to greet such an right, meanwhile, the Armenians. Can we the get a non-aggression with you? Nope. The Egyptians, Greetings, we get the trade friend. with you. Greet. You're on moderate. You, okay. Quick look at our politics. Characters are looking quite fine. And uh, we kind of got slightly delayed as far as, you know, our invasion into Asia. However, in the next uh, episode, we will be able to invade Asia properly. And let's go ahead. Mm. None of these troops are worth it. We can dismantle that building. And... Okay, we have also dismantled the building over here. We're going to build a farm. This is going to be our future food province. Um, and as such, we will be slowly diversifying our province and slowly improving our economy. Our spy, meanwhile, down here, we can also level him up. So let's get some of those abilities to level up the spy. Dignitary is finally made his way towards Ephesos, and uh, that's pretty good for now. Hmm. Now, what I am afraid of is, of course, uh, some of these other client states declaring war on us, and hopefully they won't. But by the looks of it, I think they might. Meanwhile, with the Mariani, maybe we can get some, that trade agreement. Nope, they disagree. And uh, that's pretty bad. However, quick look at the chats. Remember the Siege of Carthage trailer? That's how siege battles should have been for Rome too. Yeah, absolutely, I do agree. Rome 2 can actually do quite a lot in terms of, you know, improving its overall. Uh, but it's pretty much what CA has done for now. So there's nothing much actually the devs can do about... Um, you know, I'm sorry, uh, what am I saying? There's nothing much um, um, DEI modders can do about it. We pretty much just work with what we have. And uh, yeah, unfortunately, that is what it is. Um, meanwhile, we can disband Laoi in favor of getting maybe yet another. Uh, I'm pretty happy with my missile troops and we might actually get another pontic thorax lancer quite good unit actually 53 armor that is pretty significant um in comparison to the cappadocian lancers but the cappadocian lancers have an advantage of their own and that is that they actually come from the xenoi or the foreign population class however of course they are a bit more expensive to maintain nope um pontic thorax lancers are actually more expensive to maintain so, yeah, definitely have to watch out for that. Maybe we could replace them with Cappadocian Lancers. And I think I should probably replace them with Cappadocian Lancers. Uh, 12 and 9, 15 and 7. I really like the 15 melee attack. 28 and 4, that's 32. And this is 30, however, more armor penetration. Plus 4 bonus versus infantry, plus 3, plus 1. Not too bad, actually. These guys have pretty good bonus. A plus 4 against infantry means they have a 16 melee attack in effect against infantry. However, no melee attack increment against cavalry. So definitely, it's uh, quite neck to neck between these two cavalry units. Well, with that, let's see if we can end the turn. Perhaps, uh, perhaps try to get 
a foothold in Ephesus uh, before I go ahead and end the campaign of and not campaign sorry the video and anyways uh, I mean a lot of you have actually logged off and I understand it has been three hours it has been a long live stream pretty much for the two hour mark we had about 40 people in the live stream and a big thank you and a big shout out to all of those 40 people and of course the 26 who have remained and of course all of the other people who have come in and come out um of this battle uh sorry of the um sorry i was reading the chat of the uh, live chat and uh the stream is it really means a lot to me and of course uh, you know it's quite significant i used to struggle with having live viewers when i did do my live stream as carthage i used to have just four to ten uh, viewers at best however now it is amazing to have so many of you guys shower your love and affection towards this channel towards me and appreciate and i will of course do my best to help you guys and uh, what i will be doing and i do want to you know ask you guys since you guys took uh you know the time to you know to be here in this chat and to contribute to um you know to this uh, live stream i do want to ask you guys as to what should be the uh, future direction of the channel as well i do want you guys to take bigger um you know a bigger how do i say this a, a bigger role or a bigger responsibility in determining the future of this channel and currently i release two episodes per per week that is uh let's play series but i do want to dive in a bit more into some other things such as all of the uh, suggestions and recommendations that you guys have made i do want to step into the um you know into the saving your save games i do want to step into some other titles i also want to step in uh, towards making some guides and of course that takes a lot of time and of course i do this as a hobby so i won't be able to pump out more than two videos per week and of course one live stream because uh, live stream doesn't take a lot of editing but um, as far as recording is concerned a uh, recording an episode it does take a lot of effort and time a uh, quick look at this army can continue to march down can improve over here so let's actually go ahead and start improving some of the buildings get this this is a pretty important building the library is very good not only does it give you a research rate but it also gives you minus 1.5 empire maintenance and that stacks up if you're able to stack it up in all of your provinces so getting a library is a must in every single province as far as the meta is concerned for this game so i do definitely recommend that go ahead quickly end the turn we are going to try to get ephesos in this turn in this video um johnny oak 60 likes not too shabby absolutely absolutely 60 likes in three hours that is significant man that is absolutely significant if you actually look at my morian episode uh, or my parthian episode it's been six months and i've only gotten like maybe 80 likes so far and that's because my channel was small back then but right now it's like it feels great man it feels great and uh he dizzle thanks maybe at some point a multiplayer battle against viewers i know that can be buggy though no definitely man i would love to play with some of my viewers and definitely would like to learn a bit of multiplayer however as i said you know i'm a bit uh tight for time as far as you know because apart from just being a pure content creator i am also a modder for divided empire and i keep getting a lot of requests from uh the team and to be frank i really enjoy the team they are really nice team oh my god it's going to take one more turn to reach there all right so be it um okay we can upgrade these buildings and i don't really want the loyalty what i want to do is focus Ooh, let's see how do i get ah this does give me the academia so i guess i have to i have to keep going down that that route Meanwhile, over here, let's go ahead. Deploy this guy. Oh, 
Yeah, that's pretty brutal. Okay. Quickly get that up there. Prove the public order over here. Perfect. Population surplus in Caucasus. We can deal with that later. For now, we are slowly converting it into Hellenic culture. Let's go ahead and end the turn. Yeah, speaking about the Divided Empire team, great guys. Dresden is awesome. Really like working with him. Cam himself. Of course, uh, Q Sertorius, a Semen, um, and uh, Sergeant Meme Suraz, Caesar, Hazar. I mean, this patch is going to be really, really beautiful, you guys. Uh, the nomadic factions have received some much deserved love, and currently only the Roxolani have been updated. However, soon uh, the updates will be applying to the Royal Scythians as well as the Saka. It is the Saka, I think, in my personal opinion, that will have the most uh, fashionable units. So definitely check them out. Caesar Hassar has done a lot of work for this um, for this winter update. Multiplayer campaign with the viewers, you have the most confidence. I would agree. Yes, I would agree. And as you can see, some of those client states are breaking their non-aggression. So yeah hopefully in the okay so we do have the assassination plot the easiest thing to do is to promote the suspect and uh, let's go ahead and just attack Ephesos um, quick battle before we go ahead and end the stream or just have a look yeah I'm not happy with the auto resolve so let's just do a quick battle and after the battle gonna go ahead end the live stream it's been a long live stream multiplayer campaign with the viewers should be quite interesting man honestly yes definitely would love to do that would have to figure out a way how to do it though you know uh in in the sense who would i you know who would i decide to do it with and uh, my reshade is kind of not working so i'm just gonna go with the ugly campaign reshade however it is what it is let's just uh, go ahead with that sharp reshade um get a pikeman up here Actually messed that up. We need these cavalry units here. Fight men. Okay, move everyone behind. Start a battle. We don't really need to adjust our units this time. And the reason being is that we have we have a siege. So it's not that crucial. And okay, this is the city we are looking at. I'm gonna fast forward over here do quite a quick battle see if the romans actually are a bit adventurous and decide to sally out no, my reshade is still messed up okay and that does happen reshade does happen to glitch out at times and you know what i can actually charge with these cappadocian lancers the reason being is they do come from the xenoi population class get them charged in there get them out got rid of one archer unit move them all the way over here I focus my Scythian archers onto hitting all of their spearmen and if that happens then these Cappadocian lancers should be free to do whatever the hell they want which is also a good thing so go ahead attack those spearmen meanwhile these two guys can go ahead over here attack these spearmen Get a Cappadocian Lancers to hit this unit over here. And most of the time when I play um, casually by myself, which is not so often anymore, um, I actually fast forward most of my battles because, you know, I can handle the fast forward. Remove our archers. And one thing you want to do with your archers is if you hold down the space key, you will be able to see which unit they are firing against. Which is quite helpful actually. And over here we can go ahead charge over there. Meanwhile these units can come here. Keep charging. Cappadocian lancers can come all the way around over there. Group 3, group 4 actually go here. Group 3 I messed up. Okay. Move over here general. Keep moving. Okay group 4 you've done quite well. Our general can move up over here. 
our units has used all its ammunition. And our archers have done using whatever they had to use. To get a Cappadocian lancers got kind of held up over there. Move slightly behind. Come on. Cycle charge. Our general is under attack. Okay, move back. General can inspire. Move back. These guys can come all the way over here. Archers doing quite well. Charge again, charge again. Easy battle. Making the viewers decide my units. Yeah, why not? I'm actually going to do that in the uh, next um, in the next episode. So Mithridates will have an army that will pretty much. Uh, there we go. Just end the battle. Mithridates will have an army that's pretty much um, you know um, going to be as it is right now. But I'm also going to get let my viewers decide my army. All right, uh, and I will do that in the next episode. However. Must, yes, good spec on both sides. How do you unlock the paint thing that he has? Oh, I will make a video on that as well. Yes, definitely. I think you go to your, um, how do I say this? I think you go to um, your user apps and you can change something over there uh, in one of your files. It is possible. You can just uh, YouTube it, but I will make a short guide on it since you mention it. Um... All right, let's go ahead. Just peacefully occupy Ephesos. Uh, okay, wonderful. And dismantle all of these buildings. This can be converted back. Wonderful. And now we can deploy our dignitary over there. Okay. And some of our characters have leveled up. Get that extra experience. The more experience that will be unlocked from the strategic genius as well. Meanwhile, a Legio 2 Phosphorus has also leveled up, so let's go ahead and give him a little bit of a more of an all-round feel. Ooh, it is 12 turns per year, so that's gonna be a little bit painful. What I'm gonna do is just uh, march all of my troops over here, just transfer him over, and go ahead and disband Legio 3 Asia. And as you can see, our economy is doing quite well. We're making 8,000 uh, denarii per turn, which is uh, quite good. Asia, of course, is uh, losing a little bit of public order. However, that shouldn't be a big enough issue. The reason being is because, uh, you know, we were raided and uh, or we were raised by the Bithynians. who We have extracted our revenge upon. So definitely, um, I think next would be to perhaps attack side and then Iconian in the next episode that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go back here attack side Iconian then come back here attack Pergamon and Rhodos perhaps a little bit schizophrenic in terms of uh, you know our movement it's gonna be quite uh, random but we definitely want to keep our rear secured and I might actually just upgrade Legio to a Bosphorus in order to deal with these but they will need help because of course they have a lot more um a lot more troops and it won't be easy to attack the army as well as the garrison however that being said and done it seems everything is fine uh, politics seem to be fine maybe we can improve uh, the public order in asia so let's go ahead and do that perfect and with that thank you all for watching each and every single one of you just gonna read the chat how do you all javelins, one levy. Only levy for the whole army, lol. <laughs> 10 wild dogs, 9 cav units, and a general seems like a good deck, no? Yeah, it's quite OP. Cavalry is quite OP. I don't like them. Uh, sorry, dogs are quite OP. I don't like them. Um, I mean, I like dogs in real life, but I don't like dogs in the game. Anyways, uh, I think you must have to do an economic guide for Rome 2 Total War. I'm actually going to do it. A lot of my subscribers have asked for it and I've always redirected them to Toxburg, uh, Toxburg's channel, but I'm going to make an economic guide on my own channel as well. However, with that being said and done, I really have to go. It has been a long stream. We have streamed for three hours, 15 minutes, uh, almost three hours, 20 minutes. And uh, I thank all of you over here for being with me in the stream 
really means a lot but i'm not going to do three hour episodes <laughs> again it has been really tiring and of course i have done it because this is our first episode and a lot of the stream went into the faction introduction and the introduction of the campaign and uh, that being said and done thank you all for watching hope you all enjoyed and if you like the video like the video and don't forget to subscribe if you are interested for more peace and love